This is something that's definitely a viable way of life. And even if even if it's not right for them to, you know, sell all their stuff and go travel or live in a van, uh, the idea here is definitely that if you have a dream, chase it. Explorers, my name is Eric Casey, and welcome back to the YouTube channel Rise Above Life Challenges. I thought I would go ahead and combine my three fan life compilation videos along with some newer footage and bonus content and some cool stuff at the end into this more professional style documentary video. It's pretty awesome. And honestly, this has been probably many months in the making, but I didn't really start preparing up until now. It's been like a few days or something. I've been just making time codes and stuff and preparing it. And it's currently Thursday, November 14th, 2019, of when I'm recording this intro. And I hope you really enjoyed that pre-intro. Pre please give it a like to let me know. It's pretty awesome. So this is pretty much the entire content. Every single video, there's like over 100. All the videos that have inspired me and changed my life for the better in the last two years. And it serves a good 80 to 90% for information for you guys if you want to learn about van life or if you're getting into the lifestyle. So this is pretty awesome. I think you're really going to get something out of it. And I spent a lot of work on it. And I hope you enjoy. So welcome to my documentary style video called The Bigger Picture of Van Life. Enjoy! You get so stuck into the daily normals. You know, you wake up, you brush your teeth, you start your day, you take off, you work all day long, which you're never at home. The place you spend the most money, like $1,000 a month for rent. If you're living in the city, that exact same condo is going for like, in a shitty building, 1700 In a nice place like mine, you're looking at like $2,000, $2,500 a month for rent. That's like a majority of somebody's income. And it got me to thinking, how many people in this world work so many more hours in a day like I did just to make that huge chunk of money to pay your rent? Is it really worth it? Is it really worth it to work two weeks out of your whole month just to make that rent payment? To me, that's a waste of life. You think these guys cared about what anybody thought when they put their artistic stuff on the walls here? This stuff is beautiful. It's an expression of somebody's insides. So grab that, just like I'm doing right now, and just go live it. Be yourself. Who the fuck cares what anybody thinks? Why? Because we are all just a little bit weird. So this is a wake-up call for me and hopefully this is a wake-up call for you. Don't be like me. Don't work your entire life 
away like I did doing job after job after job for something I had zero passion for. Do what you love and you love only. It's taking me this long to figure out it's just time to get up and just take life over for yourself. Do what you want to do. It's time to take that great life adventure. I don't know where it's going to take me. I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going. All I do know is I'm giving my notice at my condo, moving into my van, and doing something with my life. It's a bit scary, yeah, but you know what? If you don't take those kind of risks in life, what's life for? It's moments like this in this life where some of the sacrifices you had of the comforts of your condo or apartment, it's moments like this that make all of that useless. Who cares about what you missed? Who cares about, you know, the bathtub and the big couch and all? Who cares? You can't get this stuff in any other lifestyle but this. I guess there was a bit of a transition phase for me because I had a good sleep, but it was an uneasy sleep. It was like that lighter sleep just in case you heard something. And I'm not like that. Normally it's hit the pillow, lights out, KO until I get up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. <laughs> and sitting here today... I feel comfortable. I feel great. I don't feel nervous about what's happening around my van. I feel completely at home and 100% safe. So I think your mind will end up going through some kind of a transition phase when you're transitioning from the comforts of an apartment to the comforts of a van. Once you get into it and realize all those things that you were worried about were just in here. It's They're not real things. They're just things that your mind's like, oh, somebody's watching. Because normally I would have been worried in the first month. I'm like, oh, what if someone comes down the street and sees my van here? <gasps> oh, no, oh, no. Now what's going to happen? Nothing. Nobody's going to come down the street. 99.9% .9 of the time, people are just going to drive by and not really care. And I think the chance of someone driving down this street tonight is zero. <laughs> or maybe 0.1 of a percent. But you do end up going through some mental transitions when you first get into it because some of the things that people worry about even some of the questions that I get they're not real they're just things that they put in their head I'm like well what if what if what if what if they always ask themselves those questions in their mind instead of backing themselves out of it and taking a look at everybody else and realizing that everybody that van lives in Canada doesn't really have a problem 99% of the van lifers that are in the US on YouTube don't have a problem and everybody else seems to think that everything's so chaotic and dangerous and so many things go on and people are getting banged on the van all the time. That's extremely rare. <laughs> and the person that's going to get that problem is parked in a place that they probably shouldn't have parked anyway. So that falls back usually on the driver of the vehicle. But I wouldn't stress about things. I wouldn't worry about things. You will all transition into van life beautifully. It's funny how I met Jax. I'm outside of VidCon just talking to a bunch of people, random people who watch me. Um, and all of a sudden Jax comes up. He's like, hey man, he starts talking. I start talking to him. I'm talking to everyone. And all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I got a bus. And I look at him like, dude, I want a bus because I've, I've been actually trying to find like an RV or something. He told me he has a bus. I check out his bus, we became really good friends. And look at him, because I met him, all of a sudden here we are doing this whole trip together. So it's really, you just gotta, you know, get out of your comfort zone, find people who, you know, like I said, have the same idea. He has the same idea as me. I wanted to connect with them. Boom, here we are traveling together. It's stuff like that. It's, you can meet someone who's gonna completely change your life, someone who's gonna help you out or make you happy or just great friends, or you're gonna meet someone who's gonna destroy you. You know, set yourself up and be smart and go on the right path. So being like a content creator in the van life space, does it ever, does doing that for like a job ever make you feel lonely? this today we talk about this a lot actually yeah and i really don't think that we get lonely so lonely i mean like i'm alone but i'm not really ever lonely you think being a creator in the van life community is lonely not for me no as i've traveled and created things i've kind of connected with people that are interested in it so i feel like it's brought me almost more together I heard you've been in a bus slash vehicle for 10 years, is that right? Uh, 12, 12, 12 and a half years, but in this bus for 10 years, yeah. So you're like the OG bus lifer. 
I mean, you know, there's a whole generation of people before me, or multiple generations, so yeah. I can't, you know, all the way back to the prairie schooners, the, the covered wagons that crossed the There we go. So yeah. Just, just, you know, in the progression of things. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Um, any estimate of how much money you've saved in rent over the past 10 or 12 years? Uh, so I haven't paid rent, yeah, in a long time, and I would say I've, I'm... I don't know, $100,000, $80,000. Yeah. I mean, think about how much you pay rent for for uh, for 12 years and multiply it out. Uh, whatever, whoever's watching, whatever you pay, times 12 times 12. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like to say that because you have to work less for the things yeah. that you have to pay for, you, it actually gives you a chance to do more things that you yeah. like to do, yeah. like have tea parties. Yeah, totally. Yeah, a lot of people in this country live in what I call time poverty, where they don't have enough time to do things, so they have to buy a lot of convenience items and things to help them feel good and happy, and then they end up having to work harder to then pay for those things, and it's kind of this vicious cycle of uh, yeah, being in time poverty. Yeah. I've had the vehicle for about two and a half months, and this is the honeymoon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm not afraid to get out on the road by myself because of my previous experience, and sitting in the Starbucks watching your videos and others, I knew I would meet some really good people out here. They're not, they're not all just a bunch of hippies and druggies hanging out in the desert and the vans and stuff. These are good-hearted, down-to-earth people. I would agree with you. And uh, a lot of them are really productive uh, members of society. And generous, too, out here. Jamie with his uh, van build, just yeah. do it, working on people's stuff for free. And, and for people like me, when I did not have a driver's license and needing that travel fix, I could go into a Starbucks and watch like 40 minutes or an hour's worth of videos from you guys, and I'd go... I'm okay now. I don't have to jump on a train or a bus. And, and I mean, I'm good for another two weeks. Or yeah. something. I'd like to thank all the boondocking YouTube producers for helping me spiritually. This is a very smart way to save money, especially if uh, you're in school. I wish I did it before. And it's becoming a cool thing. Which I think is a good thing, because it breaks the stigma of someone vehicle dwelling. A lot of people have misconceptions about people who live in vehicles. They think they're homeless, they, <laughs> they think they're lazy, or all sorts of like negative words associated with it. But actually, at this type of event, you get to see that all of those negative stereotypes are wrong. There are creative individuals out here living within their means, um, working less, traveling more, enjoying life. I've met nothing but very happy individuals out here. So if you measure wealth with money, um, you might maybe have more money. But out here, it seems like the common currency is happiness. And all, <laughs> most, a high, very high percentage of the people out here are all wealthy in that happiness department. So you need to ask yourself what you value in life, what is important to you, and what kind of wealth you want to accumulate because I want to accumulate happiness wealth and this is a place of happiness millionaire. You see this? Road. Right here? Side of the road. Totally okay for overnight parking, especially if you have a larger vehicle. You don't want to get stuck someplace uh, where the road is bad, so just pulling up to the side, you're A-OK -okay overnight. Even close to the Mexico border, the only thing that could possibly happen to me tonight is that Border Patrol agents come by, knock on the bus, and just kind of ask who I am, which is totally fine with me. I got absolutely nothing to hide. I am aware of people who are going to say things like, oh, you got to watch out for the drug cartels or whatever, and etc. I know that is a part of life down here, but... When is the last time you heard about someone getting killed or murdered or held hostage on the U.S. side? It is not something that is even in my thoughts whatsoever. I've traveled extensively from Tijuana down to Guatemala all by backpacks by myself with public transportation. And the only thing that happened to me is I had an amazing time. So don't be afraid. Don't listen to the news. 
they're mostly just fear mongering you just for uh, clicks and views and uh, for you to watch their uh, their advertisements on their commercials honestly guys great news I was minding my own business you know when I say that good things happen cleaning up the bus it's all clean and I ran into a couple backpackers Claire and Teddy yeah and uh, repeat or er, tell me again what you guys are doing exactly uh, we are hiking the border of uh, Mexico from end to end. Uh, we started in San Diego and we'll end all the way over towards Brownsville. Okay. At the, the Gulf. Gulf of Mexico. The burning question everyone wants to know <laughs> why? <laughs> well, we're big walkers. Okay. Uh, it's a really good way to see the world, uh, it's a really good way to meet people, and uh, this is just an important area. Um, I think it's important to to be learning about it and not just living far off from the border and feeling like it doesn't affect you. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get involved, we wanted to, to learn about it. Have you guys ever been scared parking overnight? Not really no. scared, a little sketched no, not scared. a few times where I was a little worried a few for a few hours. Personal but then, safety never yeah. something might somebody might might disappear something off the back. Right. So more yeah. more one time. Yeah, just actually, more worried honestly. about our stuff. Now that's yeah. that's that's a good question because now, are the, were those circumstances in a bigger city or in a smaller middle of nowhere place? It was in the city. Yeah, yeah, city. yeah it was oh, always yeah. The, city's the, always yeah, more the dangerous. Most, the things yeah. that I've realized that all the crime, yeah, oh yeah, all the bad things happen, all the all, all the the thieves, all well, most of the drug people who are going to come and you know the meth heads going to yeah. take your stuff. They're That's not going to go. They're, they're more in the cities, medium not sized go towns. Out Thirty miles down a dirt road to find one camper. Exactly. You right. know, it's like there's. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to be out in the boonies, no. hiding behind a bush, yeah. waiting for the single female okay. van lifer to, to to pull up and then poof. Yeah. Right. Yeah yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a cartoon. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's, and it's just yeah. It's and ridiculous. there is so much yeah. fear mongering about that because that's the first thing you ask. What about your safety? And that's what Eric's mom asked us. And you know they're all weird. I think you're safe. I think you're more safe. It's weird. Okay, people are gonna think that's strange. But listen, you're you're stuck in an apartment or a house. You're stuck there. Someone right. can target you, and you have nowhere to go. In this case, we can just drive away. Right. You know, what I mean, it's yeah, like the you thing don't too, have to. When you're in a totally out in a boondocking spot, you hear everything. Oh I mean, yeah. You, oh god. You yeah. like tune in to that's, that's everything really around true. you. I mean, you hear any little crackle on the gravel outside oh, the, the or birds any little on the noise. ground. Yeah. yeah, you hear it, and you 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 know you're I'm looking, I'm checking it out, making sure. But I mean, mm -hmm. again, yeah. when I'm out there, I'm not expecting if I if I'm if I'm going to see anything, it's going to be a deer or a, true. or an elk yeah. or something wandering around. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, or maybe a bear, but you know, but it's like. Not a person, you know. I'm yeah, not expecting so, that there's but on this a note, okay, so we've never been knocked on, mm -hmm. never had yep. the cops One year come, down. <laughs> never had a private like citizen tell us to get off our line. We're it pretty, happened to me once. Yeah, really? only, only once. once. Three, three years. Three years? Wow. That's pretty That's good. Pretty mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen that often. They they no. don't. As long as you don't hang out at a place for a long time on a street or something, if it's overnight, yeah, and you're gone in the morning, no one cares. Yeah, they yeah. don't really care. Parking yeah. obviously. Some places, places like in richer yeah. neighborhoods, you don't want to do that. But yeah. like you know, there's a lot of places. We parked on the street in Seattle. We parked on the street in Portland. And no issues at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. and, and I think also on that note, if you come across as nice or friendly or right. you wave, smile, right. I think that could probably go a long way. Right. People are seeing these buses, you know, around fairly and thinking, conventional. oh, who's this? Yeah. But also a lot of them are, oh wow, I wonder what the interior looks like. Right, right. yeah. 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 So more, more and more, this van life community pulls together um, and starts to clean up the act for everybody in it. You know, I'm not saying take responsible for other people's actions, but us as a whole community, like we represent each other. When someone else is out there being a douchebag, it looks back on us. It totally does, no matter how much you think it doesn't. We're a community ourselves. We're no different than a community of houses or townhouses around town. We work in town, we spend money in town, we pay our beautiful Canadian taxes. We're no different than a house dweller, except for we're not paying somebody else's rent. That's all. You know, if anything, we're helping this housing crisis or helping open up homes for people, they're not treating the people that live down here at Fisherman's Wharf on their floating houseboats. What do they call houseboats? The floating boats? The uh, tiny houses on whatever. They don't treat them different, but they're no different than us. They're no different. They found an alternative means of living and they're living there floating on the water and the city has embraced it so much, they've built a little, <laughs> a little Fisherman's Wharf with restaurants and all that stuff around them. Well, 
we're doing the same thing. We got cool vans, we're cool people, we're open-minded, we're friendly, we're happy and always excited for life. You know, we need to just put that out there more often. So many people say, well, van dwellers, you know, you're wrecking the whole system. Well, how are we? I am supporting more people now than I ever did paying my freaking landlord. What do you guys want me to do? Take all my money and just pay my landlord? Or would you rather see everybody's hard earned money go back into the communities that we travel in or back in the pockets of the mom and pop shops that we're having breakfast at? I don't know, guys. I don't know what we're gonna do with this whole community, but the community is getting bigger and we can't stop it. And there's nothing wrong with this van life community getting bigger. I know so many freaking people that are like, whoa, what, what are the communities gonna do when it blows up and gets so freaking big? They're gonna have no choice but to embrace it. That's it. The communities, I don't think, hate us as much as the news puts out there or you guys hear all the time if you're watching the news. Because when they put that out there, they're talking about a very small group of people. The cities have no idea how big this community is. Zero. And that's the truth. They only see the community that they see parked on the side of the road in their broken RVs. They don't see people like me. They don't see people that all the sprinter vans and stuff I drove by this morning. They're seeing, and I, I don't even think they're seeing the RVs. I think they're seeing the really dirty, grimy, broken down RVs, not the pretty nice ones that look like they're on vacation because they're not lumping those into this puzzle at all. I parked on a street last night by the beach, meaning that every person that walked by me this morning with their dog is my neighbor. That means being courteous, being nice, not being rude, not having stuff outside of your van that's gonna make them feel uncomfortable. Be neighborly. The key to everything in van life is this so freaking simple. It's be nice, period. <laughs> uh, someone said that to me once, they have one rule in their house for their kids and that's be nice. And I think that rule applies to everything. I think the Colombian people put a lot of extra effort into being nice to tourists to let people know that Colombians aren't all bad. In fact, most Colombians aren't bad. All the Colombians we've met have been incredible and everyone is super dog friendly, which is a huge plus for us since we're traveling <laughs> with a the dog. There are dogs everywhere. They're welcome into most stores, even most restaurants. It's not a big deal. And our dog is always on a leash. We try to keep Frank as respectful as possible, but even still, it's definitely a very dog friendly country. And even right here in like the town square of Jardin, there are a bunch of dogs just hanging out and they're hanging out with the pigeons. Everybody seems to just be getting along and relaxing. Kids are laughing. It's a really nice way to spend an evening. Yeah, if we haven't said it already, we're in the town of Hardin, which is outside of Medellin. It is an absolute joy. It is like one of the most amazing places we've been. It's high up in the mountains in the coffee growing country. So the temperature is perfect. Everybody's friendly and having a good time. The buildings are beautiful. What else could you want? So think of this though. If this is an ambulance, it would have to pass all the safety codes it would need for anything that goes in here because you're putting sick medical patients in here and all these people cry about the fiberglass, the fiberglass, the fiberglass donut is going to kill you. Well, it hasn't killed any. Maybe people have died in here, maybe, but, but it, it, they, they wouldn't have passed that code if it was breaking any sort of a health code, right? They use this stuff in houses and people live in houses all the time and not die. Look how many people lived in houses with asbestos over the years and well, that probably killed them. But Maybe eventually, you know, I had a house with asbestos so right? still here. But I don't think they would have passed this ambulance if the quote fiberglass was so bad. I think people just hyper focus. You get one person makes one stupid yeah. video and all of a sudden it just blows up, you know? It's like heaters. People would cry about those stupid propane heaters all the time. Like they're all like carbon monoxide is going to kill you. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is it carbon monoxide or dioxide? Monoxide. Yeah. yeah, I think it's monoxide. Always messing me up. People are always like, okay, your propane heater is going to put off carbon monoxide and you're going to die. You're going to die more of having no oxygen left in your van than you are of having carbon monoxide. Because you're going to run out of oxygen before that stuff's ever going to kill you. You need oxygen to live. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's true. So if anybody needs to cry about anything, it should be a oxygen detector in your van. When it gets low on oxygen. Then it goes off, tells you go. you're gonna die. Yeah. Carbon monoxide on a propane heater is not the problem. <laughs> I got one and all of a sudden I got one and I realized, I'm like, what do I need this for? 
It doesn't beep. It doesn't do anything. But no. if you, but if you take it and you go outside and you put it by your exhaust, it goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. But you put it back inside and your heater's been on for six hours. It doesn't ever. It doesn't even make a beep. Like I did, like it didn't make a beep to the point that I thought maybe my battery's dead. Maybe I am dying. <laughs> maybe this thing you know is what, killing bro? me. We're all dying. Yeah, right. Some of us slower than others. Might as well just live in a van and die and have some fun at least. <laughs> One thing I never expected about this lifestyle was how easy everything is. But you just gotta calm yourself down when it comes to worrying about stuff. You're like, well, I don't know where I'm gonna sleep. On the side of a street, period. <laughs> but people like freak out, well, I don't know, where am I gonna park? What's it gonna be? Just pull freaking over somewhere you feel feels great and pass out, that's it. If you can get a good night's sleep, you're bouncing out the next morning, who cares? And like, I've been pulling up to old folks' homes. I don't know, they always seem comfortable. <laughs> But just anything, old, folk home, old folks homes, apartments, if you're the backcountry kind of person, go in the backcountry. There's so many places to park. And, but that's the simplicity of this whole lifestyle is it is very easy. So stop making things harder than it really is. And, and that's the truth, guys. A lot of this stuff surrounding van life, it's, it's you guys that are making it hard. You know what I mean? You stress about things, well, like, well, I don't think I could. I can't park there because it's on too much of an angle. Suck it up. Welcome to freaking van life. That's what we do. Like, I don't know if I could do this and I, like, I need a shower every day. Honestly, you're going to get into the van. You're not going to need a shower every day. And that's the truth. You're going to be a stinky bum. No, you won't be a stinky bum. I'm not a stinky bum. Even the guy I was standing with here the other day, he's, he's like, man, you smell good. Yeah, I live in a dirty van and I smell good. <laughs> Be proud of yourselves. All of you be proud that you are in that elite crew that very well might just take that leap. You're the ones that people are jealous of. You think people have this negative stigma attached to van life when they see us on the side, they're like, well, you're living in a van? No, because they would like, they just dream. They dream about it. Take a look at when I had that, that, uh, that movie star, the actor in my video, Neil McDonald and his family, and his whole family was in my van. He was telling me that he's been looking at a E350 fully camperized with the high top and stuff like that. He said he's seen one with like a shower in the back and it was like, oh my goodness, if I had the time in my life to do it, I would have bought it when I seen it. Because they see that as like an escape from the busyness, an escape from the freaking chaos. So people dream, guys. You are the ones that are going one step farther than dreaming. You're actually starting to plan it. So don't let these plans and motions right now be a waste of time. Don't, don't. Remember this stuff, guys. Time is so freaking precious. Don't be the person that's gonna waste the time and think and never act upon it. Act upon it. These thoughts are here, these thoughts are beautiful. And think about the millions of people that are sitting in jobs right now doing things that they don't wanna do, dreaming about what you are so close to doing. Now imagine the cost of living right here in those apartments, what they pay every single month for rent or even to purchase them to have that freaking amazing and stunning view every day. But I do know in Vancouver, like a 600 square foot condo would sell for around a million. How insane. All of these people paying big time money just to hear, just to live here and enjoy that and this beautiful city I live. Then there's me last night that slept right, that's my house right there. And it didn't cost me anything to wake up to this view. <laughs> Still after 18 months in the van, van life makes me smile and giggle every single day. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> I feel really bad for all of you that had to pay ridiculous amounts of rent to enjoy what I just got for free but you know in life you just can't always stay in the safe zone just because it's the safe zone it's what everybody always said find a job that had benefits bonuses and you know secure and steady hours and never ever 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 run out of work well that's what that job was like but 
living life in that safe zone really freaking sucks. And I sat there this morning and figured out how much of my life I was wasting at a job I had no passion for. So when you take a look at life and you minus out your rent and realize how much less time you would have to work, you'd still have to work. You still got to make money, guys. But how much less time you would have to work if you could cut out your rent, they could still work. They could work as much as they want or they could work as little as they want because the cost of living is so freaking small. Really not sure what's caused me to feel so wound up inside. I think it's because I knew the freedom of just creating videos every day was coming so soon that the DJ work ended up being more pressure than it should have been. Even the simplest thing was frustrating and annoying. I think that comes with like letting go of something old and jumping into something new. That old stuff just starts to get really, really, really heavy in the end. Like if you're having a problem paying rent or you're having a problem with this or you don't like the neighbor next door, there's one thing about this thing I found out. That if you don't like your neighbor, you hook it on your truck and then you go see if the other neighbor's all right. <laughs> Cause there's nowhere to, there's, like you guys have got it made. You got 650 million acres of this stuff. You got people all around here and they know you're a nomad. So when you're like tomorrow, we're gonna go into Ehrenberg and dump the tanks, right? I'll leave my, my antenna there and I'll leave my lawn chairs and a barbecue and all that stuff here. And I'll go in and dump the tank, come back and it'll all be here. Cause all these people know, well, that's his stuff, right? They all watch out for each other. I don't know them, but I know they watch out just like I watch out for them. It's kind of camaraderie, huh? Exactly. And everybody's waving at each other. Exactly. Everybody's waving at you, and I don't know any of them. So, you know, that's the way it is. But it's really, like, it's so hard to explain because people always say, oh, you can move out, and you can do it, and you can do it. Well, yeah, you can do it. But it's not a walk in the park. You have to work at it, right? It's, it's you got to just walk in the park. You know, we don't, we're not YouTubers, so we don't spend all day making movies, but, you know, we got our thing. We get up and drink coffee for two hours and talk about life, and then we have, we don't, we only get down to two meals because we're not working, but, you know, we, you know, it's a tough life. And then we have supper around five, six o'clock. Then we sit by the fire at night and shoot the breeze with the neighbors, <laughs> and then we go to bed about ten. 9, 30, 10. Yep. Wake up tomorrow morning and start it all over again. Two hours of coffee, you know. <laughs> it's a pretty relaxed lifestyle. I was actually thinking this morning and last night, I feel most at home on the road inside of a school bus now. How about you, Michael? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like a new sense of energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, while I was in between buses, I, I just, uh, yeah, I've been doing this for so long now that you know, this is me. <laughs> this is this is normal. Um, you guys have probably heard that it takes about 90 days to create a habit. So this has been a long-standing habit for the past couple years. So it's good to be back. Um, yeah, and we are in the, a beautiful place like this out in nature, about to uh, enjoy Mother Nature's hot tub. So share your epiphany with us, Michael. My epiphany. My epiphany is that. After sitting in a hot spring for two hours, it puts you in a sober place, which makes you realize that as much fun as it is to be online like Jax is here on YouTube and me working on social media and my platforms, sitting in that hot tub just puts you in a place of remembering why you're on the road and why we like to share things with people like you guys. And I don't know, it just, it kind of takes you out of that society mentality of you need to build, 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 and grow, 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 and do, 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 and just kind of step back and enjoy this. That's I mean, right. That's right. All yeah. you got to do is live, live, and live. This little sign here says 159,000 kilowatts. Just for reference, my bus has a third of a kilowatt on top of it, so solar is the future, guys. Solar is the future. You don't need to be making these huge dams destroying all this uh, river valley here. Although it is beautiful, you just gotta do some solar, throw some solar panels up on the house, and you'll get plenty of energy. What a treat this is. Look at how beautiful 
this whole area is. And I just want to let you know across the way is Canada, Vancouver Island, and uh, there are many, many shipping containers going in and out, probably to uh, Seattle and uh, Olympia and those kinds of areas. But wow, tons of pullouts here. Uh, if anybody uh, wants to come and park on the side of the road and you know camp overnight, uh, I'd say go for it. Um, you know, like I said in yesterday's video, I keep saying if nobody's around, nobody's around to care. So, uh, like this spot, for example, probably not the best spot because you're right on a curve. But it is absolutely stunning, and there are plenty of places just like this. You know, like I said in my trailer for my for my channel, that's all I want is to inspire one person a day. And how awesome of a life is that to know that you know. Every day one person can get a little bit of inspiration. It's all that matters to us. And this letter means the world because, you know, she's been through a lot and has overcome a lot and still a trooper today and loves the life that she's in. So let's get into the story a little bit. 67 years old, she's been through a mountain of health problems. She's had three strokes, cancer, um, a heart stint, and she has a plug in her heart that's that was causing all of her strokes and she's had a full shoulder rebuild. So life has been beating the crap out of this lady and she is still still trucking along today and extremely happy with her life choices. She said in January when she was talking about getting into a van, um, she had family members and stuff that didn't support her. That said, hey, you know what? At 67 years old, you better start playing life a little on the safe side. That's probably not a good idea. Come on. Listen people, never too old to take over your life. Never too young to start something crazy and never too old to start something crazy. There's no time limit, there's no age limit on anything in this life. It doesn't matter, age is just a freaking number. You gotta do what you wanna do every second of every day and just do it for you. So if you look at this story here, if she listened to those family members and said, you know what, you're probably right, I'm gonna play it safe she wouldn't have the life she has today. You gotta stand up and you gotta own your world without fear of what somebody thinks. No matter how important that person is in your life, you gotta live your life. You gotta do you every day. So, she cleaned out her savings account, bought herself a 2014 minivan, and has been living in it full time since January. She said she has been fighting depression, going through a lot of depression stuff and she says she thinks that's caused from being locked into one area all the time and I get that she said that she has been a lot like me and moved around a lot <laughs> over the years like constantly moving into a new home all the time so and it sounds like the van has solved that that chase that she was going through and I've lived the same chase always something I needed to move I needed something different Gas prices in Vancouver are freaking insane right now. But I'm not here to complain about gas prices because there's no need to complain about something you have no control over. So if you're that person that sits at the coffee shop and man, I see them all the time. Gas price this, gas price that, can you believe this, blah, blah, blah. And they bring in politics and ah. You got no control over it, so don't stress about it. Just pay the damn gas prices and go about your damn day. For me, gas is my biggest expense in van life. Sure, it sucks when gas prices are the way they are here in Vancouver, but you know what? At the end of the day, in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing compared to what I was paying living in the condo. And the life I have now living in the van is way more fun. I got more adventure, more freedom. I go anywhere I wanna go. Oh, hey, everybody's taking a look at my house. Look at that. Yeah, your house, your house rocks. <laughs> Here goes when, with, he, when he needs to go potty, you let him out. Where do you out. go potty and shower? Everywhere. Well, put it this way. When you go out shopping for the day, where do you go to the bathroom? In the restrooms, Thank in you. the bathroom and shop. Right? When you're out for, for a night with the girls. But I don't shower there. I, anytime fitness. So they're, oh, so they're, yeah. they're everywhere, yeah. That's why you're so strong, <laughs> DJ Chrome. You're in the gym all the time. So yeah, so I'm... Um, yeah. This day has been amazing. It started awesome, and the journey throughout the day was just awesome, and it ended just, oh, so good. But now you guys got the proof that you can literally tell 
anybody you live in a van and nobody cares. Look, Tonight, I told a movie star in front of his wife and his friends that, yo, I live in a van, this is my house. Opened up the doors to my home, showed them my home. And what'd they say? <laughs> that was awesome. Everybody piled in and had so many questions. It's because that's what happens when you're a beautiful person, you're an amazing person, and you are not closed up or hiding anything in your world. So be who you want to be. Wear yourself on the outside. Be your true, real self every day. Never hide who you are because it's not worth it. Like I always say, guys, weirdos unite. If you're a weirdo, just wear that shit on the outside. People will love you for who you are if you're true to who you are. Look at today. I had some strangers that I just met today, some great and beautiful people, standing at the side door of my home. All of their kids were inside of my home and all they could say was really good, positive and beautiful things. I realized that, you know, the old lifestyle had all these comforts that you're used to. And I think that's exactly just what it is. That's a piece of your lifestyle you get used to and you love and enjoy it so freaking much. But when you get rid of it and you start a whole new lifestyle like living in a van, you slowly just get used to the comforts of this lifestyle. And I find this lifestyle way more comfortable, way more convenient, way more enjoyable than that was. Because you'd figure when you get access to a friend's place, you can do anything you want in his place, hang out in his hot tub, chill and watch movies on the couch all day, whatever you want to do. And you realize when you get there, the bath wasn't even worth it. Couch, well, I can have the same comforts in here. You start to realize that all those things mean nothing. All those material items and big, huge spaces mean nothing. Because I have everything I need right here in this van is my comfort zone. This is my place that I feel the best. I feel myself. And the best part about this is, is no matter where I go, where I move, where I park, I'm at home. Can you live in a van and still keep your dog happy and healthy? Of course you can. I think van life is more healthier for an animal than it is living in a box apartment or living in a house where the dog rarely sees outside the backyard unless you're taking it out on a leash, walking it around the same block all the time. Living in a van, your dog is exposed to so much more stimulation. That mind of his is always running because every time that side door opens, the dog has no clue where he is or she is. You open up the door and the dog is like, oh, look it, look it. It's a whole new backyard every time. And besides, you know, when the owner is a little healthier, the dog's gonna be a little happier. I don't know, van life is just more fun for me, so if it's gotta be more fun for me, there's a million more trees for him to take a piss on, so I'm sure he is way freaking happier. I know Disco is definitely a lot healthier physically than he was when we first started. There's so many factors to take into consideration when living in a van with your dog. Do you work long hours during the day? What are you gonna do with your dog during that time? Because you don't wanna leave your dog in the van for eight hours if it's a hot freaking day or if it's a freezing, freezing cold, like I don't know if you're in like minus 20 or something, don't do it. But those things just implement that common sense. Maybe throw your dog in a puppy daycare for those long days. I don't have that, or nor have I ever been in that situation because I'm a, I'm a movie creator. So I'm with this little homeboy all day, every day. But in those cases, just use that common sense. If something says it's too hot today, I'm gonna take him to a puppy daycare, then go do it. Really realize a 20 or $30 puppy daycare, you know, two, three, four days a week is cheaper than you paying rent. And think about the quality of life of your dog. Your dog is gonna have way more fun living in the van and going to puppy daycare once in a while than it was sitting at home for those long, long days waiting for you to come home from work. We got the van back, it drives nice, it sits nice. Ooh, all for $250 in and out the door. Um, they put a new bracket around there, replaced the snapped leaf spring, and I'm pretty excited. We've owned the van for exactly one year on August 15th that just passed. So one repair in the entire year? I'm not complaining at all. This thing has been a super solid vehicle, but I take good care of it. Like everything is, all the, the fluids are always topped up. I change the oil on time every single time. 
and the second you hear a squeak or something different, it's gotta go in and get looked at, because that's when you leave those things and you leave it for a little longer is when things really start to turn sideways. So take care of your vans, it's your home. And you know, if you're ever worried about something, just take it into a mechanic and get them to do a, like a once over or a look or a little inspection. Sometimes those things are worth spending the hundred dollars for. For one, it gives you peace of mind, and two, it's good to catch things before things go completely sideways. Uh, best part about today is all my life, every time I planned for a freaking road trip, that road trip meant packing, getting ready, closing down the house, shutting all the blinds, making sure this was not and blah, 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 all this stuff was taken care of. It was so much planning. There was zero planning in today. The only thing I needed to do to be ready for a massive long trip is to fuel my gas tank and grab some groceries and that's it. It's a cool feeling to know that your life is with you everywhere you go. And I'm always ready for an adventure. You know, nothing life could throw at me that I'm not ready for. Bring it on world. My home is right there and that thing is badass. Winters aren't as bad as you think they are, so you can take that voice in your head and just tell it to shut up. You have no right to say you can't do it in the winter unless you've tried it, done it, left it, and realized, I'm out. Does that make sense? So many people have these big, grand opinions about things they've never done. How can you have an opinion on something when you've never tried it yourself? Get out there and try it. Go. Even if you have to just go out and rent a converted van that's got a bit of insulation in it, go rent it for a week and go try it for a week. Go out in the depths of winter in the place you live in a converted van already. Please rent a converted one. Don't rent a blank cargo van because it's empty and doesn't have any insulation or no way. There's no, it's just, it's gonna be, it's gonna be wet in there, I'm telling you. Once you breathe in an empty van, it's gonna drip raindrops on you. It's gonna be miserable but go rent one of those little converted camper vans. There's tons of companies out there that have one. Go rent one for a week in the winter and try it. If you happen to leave that week going, uh-uh, it's not for me. It's not because you can't do it. It's just because maybe van life isn't for you. Ever thought about that? So, you know, is this lifestyle really this amazing? Is this, really an average day yeah it is this is an average day when the weather cooperates like this when the weather is not so great you may spend a little bit more time inside the van but you still can park at a place like this and enjoy this just on a little bit of a rainy day so I seriously think van life is just this beautiful your days are as beautiful as you make it, no matter what you live in, whether you're living in a van, whether you're living in a house, it's what you make your day out to be. I don't think van life is overly glorified. I think just the people that are documenting their van life, I think those people are just having better days than they had prior to, so they've got more cooler things to film. I was in college, I had, I had all A's, I dropped out of it because I wanted to do full-time YouTube, I wasn't happy. Not knowing if I was going to do it or not, but I was studying how vlogging was going on and I was like, why are people getting so much views when they're just eating cereal in the morning? <laughs> you know, and, and like, I don't, I, I just don't understand. So I was like, I want to film something that no one's filming before by doing abandoned stuff because I was already doing abandoned stuff. So I started doing all these abandoned stuff, like documenting it, and people never seen it. So I blew up on YouTube in like like two months. I just started blowing up, blowing up, and then I was, yo, I just got lucky, and here I am now. <laughs> like it's really just like that, man. Yeah. Like I said, guys, the mission to come to VidCon was to make friends with people, other content creators, and spread the word about the project. So I think I've accomplished that right now. What'd you yeah, say? Oh my gosh. Oh my god. VidCon is something else. My brain, my feet, my shoulders and my neck, my voice. Oh, but my soul is full of energy and it's so full of life. This is what life is. This is hard work chasing your dreams. 
because only you are in, ch are in charge of your own destiny. And in the case of VidCon, my success depends solely on me. I'm 100% responsible for myself, for who I meet, who I talk to, who I make friends with, the kind of content I make, the improvements I make, the journey I make, not to say make too many times, but yeah, this is like, man, it's so cool to meet other like-minded people. I also was talking to several people about not having like a circle of friends who do the same thing and feeling like kind of like the odd man out sometimes, kind of like the weirdo that's always like recording stuff or talking to the right hand. And that is a real thing. In my case, I'm by myself, so perhaps it's easier. Um, but it's a learning process, and, and also it's a, a learning process on, on life because I'm only bringing with, my, w with me the things that I actually use on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there's no... It's like a life experiment on how few things that you need. Right. Minimalism. So, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's, I lived in a big city for a long time, so this is therapeutic for me. I just, I love the beauty of, of mother, mother earth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. There is something special about that and that, that freedom that it's really hard to explain to people until they actually take that risk and, and do a lifestyle, create a lifestyle like, you know, you're living like I'm living and mm -hmm. you, you gain that freedom and you, you're like, wow, this is something I've been searching yeah. for and just didn't know how to find it. Yeah. So. And for the first time uh, along with that, I feel like I'm charting my own path. Mm -hmm. I am my own man. I am making my own money. No one is the boss of me. I'm the boss of me, yeah. and I am the manifester of my dreams and my future. Wherever I want to drive, I drive. Whatever yeah. I want to do, I do. And so it, it's taking back that uh, the power in a way. Like uh, uh, you know, when you you give your power away when you work for a boss or someone else. Right. It's like I finally feel like I have that power myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would you want to pay for a place to park when you can park for free at the most epic location? Exactly. Um, there's a lot of benefits to to doing YouTube. It's completely independent. Uh, I don't have to worry about anyone renewing a show or not. So, in a way, I freed myself from all of from basically from everyone who's ever gotten in my way or ever told me no and that is an amazing feeling so if this could be a lesson to anyone else if there's anyone standing in your way for anything um, just go ahead and do it on your own if there's some kind of barrier for entry or some gatekeeper to success there is another way to do what you enjoy doing. Um, it just might take a little bit different shape. You might not make as much money. It might not result in as much, <laughs> I don't know, size or scale of business or whatever you do. But if you really enjoy it, those things don't matter. I am happy to cut my expenses and continue to do what I like doing as opposed to make more money and spend more money. Um, there's complete freedom in what I'm doing, and that is priceless. It's back here above the bed. I'll definitely be doing some dreaming back there. But also, it's a reminder for you guys to keep dreaming. Keep the dream alive. Chase your dreams. Think about your dreams. Dream about your dreams. Dream a little dream. Get some good sleep and rest and count sheeps. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a reminder, it's important to really ask yourself what your purpose is in life, why you're here, what your dreams and ambitions are, how you would like to spend your days, because time never stands still and we are only here for a short amount of time. <laughs>
I'm going to continue to keep wanting bigger and better things because that's what life is all about. Not sticking with one thing, just keep driving to more awesome things. All right, this isn't going to be a motivational speech. This is, this is about me. I want so bad to cut my ties to Vancouver, no longer take any more DJ bookings and show up in a town like this and have this feeling I've got right now. That feeling about how home-like this place feels, how comfortable and how warm and how, you know, this town feels like it's got like arms wide open. It looks like it's snowing, doesn't it? Can you see that? It's like little pollen. <laughs> Boy, am I glad I don't got allergies right now. But I just wanna to come to a place like this, pull in, fall in love and say, you know what, I wanna spend some time here. Maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks, who knows? You spend time with yourself, you be with yourself, and those little boundaries are always small little insecurities. Tell you something, these last two weeks, I've knocked the shit out of everything around me. I look around, I see nothing but freedom. I feel 10 times more confident today than I did before I left Vancouver, what, two and a half, three weeks ago. I feel like myself. I feel real. Guys, you gotta do something awesome with your day. I, I could talk forever about this subject, but you guys gotta do something awesome today. I don't give a crap what it is. When you get off this video, do something different. Do something you've never done before. Man, break those barriers away and start living. So much more fun. When you just don't care about anything. I don't care what anybody says or anybody thinks. Why? Because you know what I am? Weirdo! <laughs> and I don't care. <sighs> Here's a little thing for you. Put your phone in front of you. Go find someone. Record you doing this. Record yourself doing what I'm doing right now. Just talk and just let it all out. Feels so <laughs> good. It's weird to watch this back, by the way, when I edit them. Yeah, but anyway, it feels good to just let it out. You know, talk to yourself sometimes. It may sound freaking messed up, but put your phone in front of you and talk to you. Say, what's up, man? What's stopping you from being awesome? Oh, it didn't take me long to realize that I just cut myself free from everything that was holding me back from being alive. And from that point on, all my life that I've been living for the last year has been the best year of my entire life. We're talking like 42 years of not living and finally on my 43rd year, I've had the opportunity to live my life for the first time. I've been in the van for over eight months and it's taken me seven months to finally calm down and slow down. Things in my mind will always run fast. That creative side of me just like, it'll never stop moving because that's what my mind is like. It jumps and skips and just like, it's fast. But creatively, that speed and that fastness, that ruckus when it comes to just how my mind functions during the day on a creative side is very soothing to me. You know, that, like my leg constantly bounces. I never stop moving. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Something on me always has this vibration to it. But that vibration in me brings me calmness and now that I have found this and found freedom I shouldn't say found freedom now that I've taken over that freedom in my life and taken over that part of my life and started to live this kind of stuff brings peace and calmness to a part of my mind that used to be full of stress I am not the same person that I used to be because I can think back three years ago and if someone would have said, hey man, I'm thinking about going to Lillooet. Have you ever been there? I would have said, yeah, drive around it because ain't nothing in Lillooet. It's just a bunch of naked mountains and the small town and what's there to do? And then you look at my life today and how this city boy has changed and this place is downright spectacular. <laughs> I would recommend everybody to make this a place that you have to stop. This is why I have such a connection to graffiti. Graffiti is a way for someone to express their feelings, their emotions, their creativity through an aerosol can. 
putting up a piece of artwork for those to experience and enjoy. I love the exploration of it and finding it and seeking it and seeing the messages that people want to share and put out there. This couldn't be more fitting in my lifestyle right now. This couldn't be more fitting for anything, for both me and you. This is the ultimate saying right now. Take your time. What's the rush on doing anything in this world when time is the only thing you've got left? And I made a video not that long ago <laughs> about this. About time being so freaking precious. Take it for you. Um, I'm a single guy. I've been a single guy for an extremely long time. Um, and I enjoy being single. I enjoy that I'm responsible for every feeling in my day. Where... <clears throat> With me having a girlfriend, I know don't let's not don't start the girlfriend topic, but for me having a girlfriend or someone like that in my life, now I've got their energy to affect my day as well too. And um, I really, honestly, I'm I'm a nomad in a relationship too. I like to just roam. Does that make sense? Um, I'm a I'm a you can't tie me down kind of guy when it comes to my lifestyle and it comes to me personally. So I just enjoy the single life. I don't know why, why that got onto that old dog. <laughs> so having the dog really solves a lot of that scenario when it comes to relationships. You know what I mean? So me having the dog in the van is, is very much a companion. It's a bro I can, you know, go for walks with and talk with and just, you know, I, I just, I love having the company. So, and I think if I did van life without the dog, I'm sure there was some point down the line that I would end up seeking out a relationship and then there'd be a breakup and then there'd be just like stupid emotions that I don't want or need in my life. Does that make sense? <laughs> Cause he is going to love me no matter how much of a dick I am. Does that make sense? He's not going to yell at me if I'm being a douche that day. <laughs> the main reason why I'm going to sustain this lifestyle forever is because of just that word. It's sustainable. It's affordable, it's adventurous. And a lot of the things that have come into this lifestyle, like consuming less, buying less, <laughs> throwing less things out, owning less, all makes all of this just less weight on my shoulders. I've lived too long of my life with that pressure and that weight of life on my shoulders, making me feel like I am grounded, I am stuck, I am trapped and can't go anywhere. This life has taken all of that away. It's, I, have, I feel no pressure, no strain on my shoulders, no strain on my neck, nothing that makes me angry and annoyed because I feel like I'm trapped somewhere in life that I can't get out of. Van life has freed me from everything. It's given me a whole new life. It's given me a whole new outlook on life. I've met beautiful people, amazing people, been to some awesome, amazing places, and I still yet haven't traveled far from Vancouver. All of these adventures are all within like a five hour drive from where I was born and raised. There's nothing in this world that can take me away from van life. Not a person, not a girl, not a business offer, financial offer, opportunity, nothing that is gonna take me out of living inside of my van. You can take up all of those great offers in life and still live in your van parked wherever you want every morning. Why would I give that up? Why would anybody wanna give that up? Five years ago or whatever it was, maybe, you know, maybe a little longer, the internet wasn't where it is today. The internet is like, it's grown up, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's grown up to a point that it's endless on what you can do. I don't know where I'm going with this video. I just know that, damn it guys, I feel good. And I feel good thanks to one freaking thing. Two things. <laughs> Me having the balls to do it. But the main thing is van life. Living in the van has been the most beautiful thing I have ever done for my world. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine living another lifestyle. I don't think there is another lifestyle for me. I don't think I am meant to grow roots and stay in one location. I just don't. And I think a lot of people that are watching this have the same thought pattern where it's like, you just want to go. You just want to go. 
body doesn't want to stay in one place. I think people are born to be nomads and those people who are just like stuck in their spots aren't born to be nomads. Those are the ones that are supposed to build the villages. We're the ones that are supposed to go travel around and visit the villages and bring our awesome creative selves and do things for the villages. I don't know where I'm going with that, but you get the point. And life will help you save money, no question. There's no question at all. But I never got into this for the financial side of the lifestyle. It just freaking happened to be ooh, the greatest thing ever for my debt. I got into it because I needed more adventure in my life. I needed, I needed, a, I, I wasn't feeling at home in my condos or apartments or houses or anything that I had rented over the last freaking decade and some of my life of renting. I don't even know how long I've been renting for since I was probably 18. I'm not even gonna count that because it makes me feel really old. Nowhere's ever felt like home like van life feels like home. To see the look on my daughter's face when we got here and after she went for a swim and realized that this is my house today. This is my yard. This is what happens in my world every day. Just to see that look on her face like, holy crap, this is really the life my dad lives was amazing. It was just beautiful to see. And if you're looking at these videos and you watch anything that I do on my channel and you sit there and you're like, man, do I want this so bad, then you have to go get it. Nothing in this world is handed to you. And when it does get handed to you, it's not satisfying and nor will it last. The greatest things in this world, you got to sacrifice things to get it. You got to grind hard to get it. You got to go through the muck and the dirt to get where you want to go. These things don't come easy. You might watch these channels going, man, this is just so simple. But if you really knew the emotions and the feelings that I went through inside to get to the place that I am today, it would break down so many people. And I know a lot of people don't have the power in them to get through this shit that I've been through. I've been through a lot, everybody. I gave up an entire life that I worked my ass off for to have this one. I literally walked away from everything I ever worked for my whole life because it wasn't getting me anywhere. So I just walked away from it all and grinded at something brand new and that's making video content. But you have to put in the work. Things just don't come super easy. And that work starts within you. It's not outside work. It's not all this things and the time you're wasting with other companies and working to make other people money. It's the work you guys need to do within yourselves. You gotta start from in here because if this thing isn't rock solid and tight, nothing on the outside is gonna be right. And if it appears on the outside to be right, it's never gonna feel right. So do something for yourself today, you guys, because this stuff is so worth the sacrifice every time. And if you don't, if you don't take that risk, if you don't like make that sacrifice and give up things in your world for hopefully a better thing on the other side, if you don't go through that risk, you never know what's on the other side. The connection to mother nature is real. The connection you feel within yourself is real. I got van life to thank for everything that's going on, everything. The rawness, the realness, the connection, the smells, the energy and the feeling. All because I'm way more connected to myself, I feel more connected to mother nature, and way more connected to just straight up life. <sighs> I turned 45 this month. August 16th is my birthday, I turned 45 years old. And my whole life, every time birthdays come around, I would go out and buy myself something epic. I'd buy myself something that just made me feel good. That was my time to spoil me. I don't have to buy myself anything this year. I didn't really have to buy myself anything last year because I gave my life the biggest gift I could have ever given it. And that's life. Letting go of stresses. Stop fighting those stresses and finding ways to make them better. Cut them loose. If you got something in your world that stresses you out, cut it out. That's it. Say stress, peace out, I don't need you, I don't need anything that is attached to that stress. You're out of here. And that's what I did. And it was seriously the best gift I could ever give myself because today I am truly, truly happy. I get so pumped about being places I've never seen before. 
And tomorrow is gonna be that day, probably for a good portion of this week. As I'm driving here, I'm thinking about a comment I read the other day. Someone's like, I think you're overkill with how excited you are. I think this is all BS. I think nobody can be this excited about life. If you're not living van life, you have no idea what it's like to be so pumped up for every day. Feels good to be debt free. Feels good to never pay rent again. Feels good to work the job that I wanna work, that I created for myself. It feels great to share my life and be with all of you, my family. Ah, how, what's not to be excited about? My life is exactly where I dream. I've, I've dreamt my whole life to be here. Now I'm here. Of course I'm gonna be excited about it. Always trust that tummy, man. When the tummy tells you something, follow it. If it says you're going the wrong way, turn around. If it says something about somebody you're with, listen to it. If your stomach says, I don't like this person, say bye-bye, pal. I gotta go. That little thing you got in there, that, I don't know what you wanna call it, intuition, trust that. But I've met people where this lifestyle has affected them in different ways, whether it be helping them cope with some things that they've been going on in their life inside or calming pieces of them that used to be angry and just bitter and brutal. And it's turned people from, from being the negative downside to be the positive upside. They feel more connected with nature. They're like, just something about it feels raw, it feels real, and it feels like you're supposed to do this. And I remember the first person that said that to me, they're like, look, I think you're supposed to do this. I, be I believe that your body's not meant to sit still. Your body's not meant to do the same thing every day. And that person was so right. It just resonated, resonated so deeply with me. I'm like, we had a pretty deep conversation about it. I honestly think our bodies were meant to roam. We were meant to explore. We were meant to just be in nature. We were meant to do what our hearts felt is right what our heart like what our heart feels is what we're supposed to do for a living what makes you the most excited inside is what you're supposed to do for a living that's how you're supposed to earn your keep you know what i mean and i love van life i love my new job this has got to be the best job ever look where my office is today look where i'm working today and it's great that I can put in a good hard like five hour work day or whatever it was today. And technically I don't have to do anything for, so if I got four videos done, three days. I could take three days off if I wanted. I probably won't. I'll probably keep filming. <laughs> I take a lot of time off. I know it seems like I'm up editing every single day, but when I get ahead on videos, it's really probably the greatest thing ever for me because then I can breathe. There's no deadlines, there's no stress. There's nothing worrying about what am I gonna film today because I gotta upload tomorrow. There's none of that stuff. When I'm ahead, it's all good. Van life, you guys, there is nothing else in this world like it. random approach I'm over there chilling at VidCon and then this guy comes up to me named Jack Austin it's J-A-X Austin and he's over there traveling the world in a van and I had to see his his little van check it out look at this van right now he, he literally goes everywhere he's on a 49 state trip right now and he's advertising it look at this bus man He's the dude right here. Hey, what's up, Tell everybody? me about the bus, dude. What do you want to know? I want to know, like, what got you started. Uh, hey, what's up, man? There's there's my fan that just came to this. Uh, yeah. And started him to buy a bus. How cool you got, is that? You got that guy to buy a bus, too? Yes, dude? yes. See? So, the bus, it's a 2003 E450. Uh, it's diesel. I picked it up uh, for about five grand. Took me mm. four months to uh, renovate it. Uh, on the inside, I'll show you it's all reclaimed wood and all that stuff. Um, so meet me on the passenger side. Let's I'm gonna, over there. I'm, gonna I'm just up. admiring this. Look at this daily vlogs. Hey, it's a dope bus. Thank you. Damn. What's up, and this guy, like, like I said, if you want to travel the world on a budget, 
<laughs> Buy a bus, you. man. Just kick it. I'm even me. I'm looking into buying a bus and just drive it around, travel around the whole United States and Canada. He's got a bus too. Look at yeah, that. look at his. He got he got a real school bus, bro. We've been uh, cruising around VidCon, meeting people, and right here Yo. is the man. Fun for Louis. This is somebody who I once I found you a mm. few years ago yeah. at VidCon, maybe number four or five or whatever. Yeah. I've been watching his stuff ever since. Sweet. The adventure has been amazing. Nice. And I've been watching, being like, I want to travel full time. I want to daily vlog full time. And here I am and doing it. Yeah, and now your adventure is amazing. This guy, this guy. Uh, we still need to plan uh, a trip together and make sure we can get like a good week just having yeah, an adventure somewhere. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's rally up the, the troops on yeah, school buses and we're gonna make it happen. So what are you doing straight after this one? I'm open, I have no plans. We're cruising up to Lake Tahoe in the adventure bus. Maybe Let's you could maybe you could convoy yeah. us. Are you, uh, are you doing exploring with Josh? Yeah, he's coming, he's coming. Him, Cody. We've got 11 people coming in the bus. It's an awesome time to collaborate. Well, I'll tell you what, I have room in my bus, so yeah. if anybody wants to ride with me... Come with us, bro. The yeah, more the merrier. The only thing it. is, it's going to be a bit... We've got a cabin booked from Lake Tahoe for two nights, but I'm sure there'll be some floor space or something. Dude, or I, on I the bus. in my bus, yeah. yeah. I, I, no, it's come along. It is, I, I, got, I got a lot of things to show you in the bus as well. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. I got some cool things figured out. I got AstroTurf on the roof. Ooh. It's nice, cool, it's nice. fun. Yeah, dude, I get, we gotta hug it out, bro. Seeing the bus, after learning about the bus a bit. <laughs> on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to purchase a bus in the future? I feel like it's 18 right now, that's what I'm feeling. Damn, what about you? <laughs> yeah, that's same. We just need to, if, it, if we figure out the bus. way, the means to do it, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Like it's, even oh, like man. for our travels and then even the hat. I feel like every family should even have one of these. Like seriously though. Totally. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've been hanging for a bit uh, with two very cool guys, actually security from VidCon. There was a video that went viral and unfortunately somebody chose to disrespect these guys in the worst of ways. So we're over here chilling. It's symbolic for anyone around the world that can just follow you. It yeah. shows you support to you. Yeah. Yeah. All, the, like, all the comments, there's like, Thousands of comments on your People Instagram. Telling us so. yeah. Beautiful telling us that we're not ugly. That yeah. Like, <laughs> what he said, dude. like, dude, like we just like the only thing we want to come out from it and preach from it is like equality. Yeah. Because yeah. We're all and equal. No bullying. And yeah. No bullying. And yeah. Because as long as everybody is equal, because Trinity we're all just people. one race, and that is the human race. That's you know? true. That's right. That's true. Everyone's equal. There shouldn't be really there shouldn't any be bullying. Color. There shouldn't yeah. Be yeah. Color. yeah. So like, I don't know. People are just absolutely. They, they have egos, and then they let it get to mm -hmm. them. But I mean, everyone has one, you know, like yeah. I'm, I have one, like it gets to me sometimes, you know, I can't say it doesn't because, you know, it we're, does. Uh, yeah, we all make like, mistakes. Yeah, you know, like beans. everyone, yeah. everybody. I it was, <laughs> it was, it, I was more all shocked by the support and the love and how everyone's acting about it. And it's just cool. Like we, I never thought I would become noticed for being nice. Yeah. You know, like for being able to put up with something like that. Like it wasn't my intentions to like. It was just beautiful the way it happened and we didn't plan this. You yeah. Know, like this was just uh, the act of God. Somebody <laughs> somebody was looking out for us. Yeah, definitely. They came out today. Yeah, the message is we all have a choice. Our words, our thoughts, everything. You can choose to be positive, you can choose to be negative, and it is contagious. Your negative words are contagious. Your positive words are contagious. And this is a perfect example of what positivity can do to a negative situation. So thank you, Louis, for posting that, and everybody else who posted stuff everybody for these guys. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Cool. Hi, what is Jack? Tell That's me. me. You're Jack? Yeah. Hi, Jack. I'm June. I'm so glad to meet you. Oh, well, it's nice to meet I you. I have some information for you. Do about you? This is the county. Okay. Um, I'm Shasta Indian, and I don't know if you're interested in anything about our history. Sure. Okay, I have a flyer for you. That was back in 1999 when we had initially petitioned for federal recognition. Um, and for the past 200 years, our you know our federal recognition has been denied. And I believe that it has to do with you know the the gold that was found in Wairika, where my ancestors used to live. Federal recognition allows us to claim to be Native Americans. Oh, okay. Okay. So the United States passed laws in the early 50s giving the Shasta people federal recognition. They gave us a reservation in Quartz Valley. Uh-huh. And I'm guessing there was nothing really useful there. They wanted your gold and that was it, right? That was it. And so legislature through the 60s and the 70s 
they created laws that now you can't make jewelry, you can't, you can't claim to be a Native American unless you are a federally recognized Indian tribe. Not every day I get flagged off the road by a very friendly person trying to um, spread awareness for Native Americans' rights. Uh, personally, I think it's very important. Uh, we are all uh, immigrants, and uh, the Native peoples really should have the top say because they really they got shafted on the deal and massacred, unfortunately. So. If you had any advice to your younger self, what would you tell yourself? Do it now. Don't wait till later because you don't know if later's going to be there. Hello. Coming to check us out? Yeah, coming to check you out. Come on in. Oh, I heard a crazy thing. Tell me. You guys fed 200 homeless people? <laughs> 506. 506? We did 200 in, home, uh, in, in Vegas. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. How'd you pull that off? This, this little stove down here, man. We just go to town on it. Yep. That little stove fed 506 people? Yeah, we're still going. We're only Jeez. halfway. We're trying to do 1,000. Did you, did you vlog at all? Yeah. We did, yeah. yeah we we did. had right. a few videos about it. What, what's the channel? The Nomadic, the Nomadic Movement. Movement. All right, cool. Check it out there. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to go check it out myself tonight. Manya, what? So how long? How much of the talk did you watch yesterday? Uh, wait, which talk? My talk. Um, probably first few minutes. Okay, why is that? Because I started crying. Why? Because I was so emotional. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> because you are such an amazing person. Um, you are. Yeah. I'm not looking for like compliments, by the way. Yeah. Um, and you just inspired me so much, and we spoke so much about like what it means for me to travel and all the struggle that Jax went through. It's just what I feel, and this is just so emotional. Yeah, yeah he's an awesome person, and um. <laughs> And what's yeah, your, it's just tell, great. tell us your channel. Yeah, so well, you can probably find me on Instagram. It's at Maniac Dabrowska, which is do I spell that? Uh, you have to tell gonna... me later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically, we were oh, talking about you so much. empowering yourself. We were talking about <laughs> saying yes to your dreams. We were saying lots of you know inspiring things. I kind of forget because I had no idea what I, what I was saying. Do you want to su sum up the whole hour? Yes. Um, it was basically when you live there's a reality and your dreams and sometimes reality can hit and be like hey um your dreams cannot happen yeah and then you wait for such a long time and you try you try you try and finally <laughs> it happens and you just say hey i've been working for that for such a long time and it happened and it's actually possible yes. so i think that was like very inspiring right and one more that thing was can... acting with intention doing things in preparation for your dreams to come true yes like i'm not a public speaker that was my third time public speaking but i took and some public great. speaking <laughs> opportunities thank you in preparation for something like this which i had no idea i was going to be a part of but i i just knew in my mind like this is what i want so we need to get ready and poof here i am i'm like yes. on the I'm on the list with like people I've been watching for years, like Louis and everybody, and that's so special to be here. And to meet yeah. people like you and new friends. Thank you so much. Dzień dobry. Yeah, dzień dobry. <laughs> and a car just drove over the rocks here, and I thought to myself, is someone, is, what is going on? And look who it is, Reed showed up out of the blue. <laughs> what? Please explain yourself. Uh, so we sold our house, it's all done. And I was going to go to the bus fair up in Eugene, Oregon, but my bus isn't ready because I've been treating it like a hobby and not a job. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still there. Coach works. And I just drove Mr. Wolf. You just drove up from Colorado. I stayed at, I was going to stay in Moab last night, but I actually got stuck on the road. And it, long story. I'll tell that one later. Oh, so anyway, you're on the road for two weeks. Are you going to the bus fair then? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, dude, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, you got a place to stay if you want. Awesome! <laughs> or up top on the putting green. There you that go. There you go. <laughs> By the way, Wander Boom is here. We were just catching, I was trying to just explain what just happened. <laughs> we heard a loud noise and I thought, what kind of, what kind of crazy what guy happened back there? And then the all of a sudden, Reed but shows up. I, I modified my Yukon too. Let's see it. <laughs> Wait, I thought you sold that to the, uh, No, to... this is Mr. Wolf. Mr. White is in Vegas with the guys. Right. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, with the bigger tires. Yeah, the... Look at this, he's got a futon inside. I think I can already see it. This is nuts. Like we were just literally talking about the countertop <laughs> situation, some other situation. And then this guy shows up here. He's got tunes, he's got tools. He's got futon. Bed. <laughs> wow. Futon, he's ready for the road. Just, Inverter. Uh, Look, he's got, see, this is this is uh, the bus life on, on a budget here, van life. You can get a little inverter, hook it to your battery. All right. Little futon. $500 build, right? Yeah, basically, not even that. 
I uh, think I spent two fifty on the crouton. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. Not even that. Nice. Look at that. That is so cool. I love Canada. Canada's awesome. One other thing I did not mention yet was how clean it is. Um, and of course, <laughs> proving me wrong is a little bit of trash here, but I think this is kind of a, perhaps a popular, popular pullout, but all the little trails I went on, most of the roads, hardly any trash. Um, also, we met this really nice naked ho uh, ho uh, hippie at the hot spring and he was eating raw spinach and mangoes in the hot spring so we were so inspired by him we got a bunch of uh, fruit and um, vegetables and mangoes we got are absolutely fantastic and uh, we're just gonna channel our inner John yes yes every day we ask ourselves what would John do that's right we saw a little bit too much of John's Johnson as well <laughs> but uh, yeah, John actually, a uh, really smart dude, cured his own cancer by eating raw fruits and vegetables for a long time. Uh, I don't know if he did anything else, but uh, it was pretty amazing, so I'm a big fan of uh, preventative maintenance on the bus, so let's try and do a little preventative maintenance right here on my belly. It was awesome hanging out with those two this morning. Great time walking out there to the rock. And I'm super thankful that they ran into locals yesterday that showed them how to get here because anything I found on Google Maps was taking me through construction zones. And this was down some odd way and then down some side road. Uh, I tried so hard yesterday, but I am super pumped that they met some people from around here that showed them around and that's pretty cool but that just goes to show you how friendly van life is those people live just up the street from the lighthouse that we slept at last night meaning that locals a lot of times don't care as long as your vans are out of their way not blocking their view not even even near their home down at the far end of the dead end clearly the locals didn't care they pick them up took them uptown, took them all touristy places, including down to here yesterday. You know guys, van life isn't as like, uh, people don't hate on it as much as you think. There's more love out there than it is that negative Nancy person that's just like eh, all up in your business. There's more nice people than negative people and I think you're gonna find that once you get out adventuring, at least here in Canada anyway. I seriously think the world has a way of bringing good energies together because every time I turn around I find myself in amazing situations like this and there's got to be no way to explain it than that the world is just pulling all this beautiful energy together because we all belong together we're a community we're a family no matter how you look at it just follow that energy that's inside you and it'll bring you closer to people that you need to be around and that is the truth if you don't feel the energy from somebody push that person away and keep pushing towards your own personal center personal energy inside because today come on i'm driving down this road and we find these most the most spectacular places and all of a sudden out of nowhere off to the side of me these two guys start chanting so while we're sharing just random thoughts, I've had two military people from the US message me that are suffering, suffering with PTSD, I think that's how it's said, and I don't know much about that stuff, and have shared some pretty amazing stories with me on how one gentleman finds, finds, finds a moment in his day where he feels calm because of my videos. He said something about my videos brings calm and peace into his world and, and you know, he's never felt that since he's left combat. You don't, you don't, do you understand what that means to someone like me that's making videos when someone in that scenario who's been in combat and is suffering today and hasn't been able to find himself since he left combat? Do you, do you understand what that does to a guy's world to sit there and know that something I've produced has can bring some warmth to somebody's world. It's incredible. Like, honestly, guys, this YouTube stuff is more powerful than you think. Your voice you have inside of you is more powerful than you think. And I think in life that it's not about money or success or anything else. I think in life that 
if you can leave this planet and know that you've made a difference in one person's life, then damn it, you had a great life. And with my goal on this channel to inspire at least one person a day to be awesome, I think those two military people that message me, you know, I could tap out right now and know, hey, you know what? That was massive. Are you guys freaking impressed? I can change a tire. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, no problem, drive safe. Well, at least it was a beautiful place to blow a tire. You read that? For a town that was really popular in the 1800s for the gold rush, sure seems to be very welcoming today to people like us. Wanderers rest. This huge parking lot right against the river. Look at this giant parking lot built for people like us. And as soon as you pull into town, this is how you're welcomed. Why don't more towns do this kind of stuff? Give us a place to park. Put up a rule that's saying we can't park more than one night, but give us a place to park. This is the fun part about not planning your trips and just going out and driving. You get more excited when you hit something you didn't even know was there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the all new Van City Van Life Nature Show. <laughs> I have never been so attracted to nature like that. These birds have no freaking care. Like at some points they're standing like a foot in front of me. They're like, ah, oh, whatever, dude. <laughs> He's our food supplier. Mmm. We are in luck. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Finally. There it is, right there. This little clippy thing, which attaches to that. And I need one of those screws too. Success. Sweet. Better get back here with my tools before somebody takes that piece. I got it. These things right here <coughs> adjust the pitch and the angle of the headlights. See, without it, they fall down. The dealership wanted 140 bucks for these. I have a feeling I'm gonna pay about five bucks here, but let's go find out. Let this adventure be a lesson to you that uh, if you give up, it might be the next try where you find success. So, I know there's a bunch of uh, memes and things out there, but you know, there's one of this guy digging for diamonds or something, and he gives up right before he finds them. So, <laughs> so that's my message for today. Years ago, he just decided uh, he's done. He, well, why pay overpriced rent or you know uh, mortgages or anything like that? And him and his dog sold everything off and moved into the van. Amazing. So he just cruises yeah. around Vancouver, puts his van everywhere. wherever he wants. Any and everywhere. Yeah, he's he's done. Uh, he's come to the island several times, and and he goes all up and down the island. Like his latest videos, um, probably about uh, two three weeks ago, are from the island. Um, and yeah, he just goes all the small islands. He tours around and just shows everybody British Columbia, and and that's his. That's that's what he does. <laughs> so, like, how does he survive? Where does he get food for him and the dogs? Like, like where's he getting money from? Like, does he still work? It's just that he lives in a van or what no so his job is actually posting videos so youtube pays him and and um and there's another one called patreon and uh what it is is um it's a minimum one dollar to subscribe to the, his patreon account and um and he has multiple subscribers for that and he gets paid every month from patreon and i'm sorry oh i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> we are not doing the right business i'm sorry this right? guy gets paid to live in his van and travel around bc isn't it ridiculous? Like he comes over here and I'm like, dude, this is phenomenal, man. <laughs> I'm like, I want to cut every video I'm in. I want to cut of that. <laughs> Daniel, does Chrome Valdez have a girlfriend? <laughs> no, he does not. Uh -huh. and, and like, unless, Robin, unless you're willing to drop everything and travel with him, he doesn't. He wants nothing to do with you. Yeah, yeah. See? Everybody's got their price. I think that I, I can just picture the meeting between Robin Farrell and Chrome Valdez right now as he gets out of the van and says to you, first stop I am 35 years old I am divorced and I live in a van down by the river 
<laughs> yeah, in most cases, yeah. I would be a hard no on this. But now that I yeah. know this situation, I might be okay with it. <laughs> it is unbelievable. Like, the, the amount of, well, you saw, like, he has close to 30,000 followers now. And it's just getting more and more and more, right? So, yeah, he uh, he's doing quite well. I wish, I wish I could drop everything and do that. But I don't think my kids would like it. <laughs> We love to travel, and we thought, well, why can't we just bring our kids with us? Now, the family of six eats, sleeps, and lives in a converted school bus. Ah, so this is it. Home sweet home. <laughs> home sweet home. Can stand up? Just barely. <laughs> How many square feet is this? 250. She knows right off the top of her head, yes. Mm -hmm. We caught up with them in rural Tennessee. We see what we're doing, too, is a large part of our kids' education. I mean, they're pretty young, and they've seen the Declaration of Independence. They've seen the Lincoln Memorial. They've seen a lot. Robin homeschools the kids, and Rob is still a financial planner. Do you ever have clients say, I don't want to take money advice from a guy living in a bus? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, a few, and then they became clients. When they understand that it's a lifestyle, not a consequence. Yes, right. it's, yes it's a lifestyle, We're not a consequence. We're not doing this because something happened. We yeah. chose no. it. I consider a lot of these people conscientious objectors to the culture we're in right now, which is really get on this work treadmill with no guarantee of you know any sort of safety net, and yet you should still pledge allegiance to the culture of the endless work week. Jessica Bruder, who chronicled van life in her recent book, Nomad Land says that the movement accelerated during the housing crisis of 2008 and hasn't stopped a decade later. Millennials I met on the road said, look at this, I can't pay back my student debt or I don't want to go into debt. I can afford to do this. I should do it when I'm healthy and spry and they're out there doing it. In my own business, driving down the road and I ran into these two guys because I saw their bus. Uh, Jeremiah and Mark, can I get a quick tour? Sure, yeah. All right, what do we got here? You going, well, yeah, I'll go in first. All right. We run the motor off veggie oil. This is our veggie pump and filtration system. I'm so jealous. We can also run diesel. That's controlled right here. Mm -hmm. If we can't find motor off uh, uh, veggie oil, we run diesel. This is our pantry right here. We keep games and food and secrets in there. <laughs> hey guys, you're going to be on a video blog or something? Yep. This is my buddy. What's your name? Mr. T? Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, this is the bathroom. Super Ooh. glamorous. Nice, right in the front. Super glamorous. Cool. Everybody loves showing off the bathroom. I think you, that's the one thing everybody's like, where do you go to the bathroom? So we uh, we sell we sell stuff on Amazon to pay the bills as we go. This is awesome. Amazon storage for stuff. Cool. There are I won't flip this seat up, but this whole seat flips up. There are six uh, 12 volt batteries in here. Cool. Um, the inverter's in there. This is the 73 VW. Seven, and so you just welded it to the frame, yeah, I'm guessing? Yeah, welded it to the frame and then took a plasma cutter and cut this section out. Wow. And then this is, here, I'll let you come back in here. Okay. This is my daughter's. You can just go in there and go up to the, go up the stairs. You can see their bunks. Oh, cool. It's bedroom. upstairs? Oh, the what? And they sleep up there. Oh, that is so cool. My this gosh. That's how you get up. And then, yeah, <laughs> that's right, Emmett. You open that tailgate onto the deck. Oh, that's and how you get on the roof, yeah, huh? Yeah, you can get up there if you want. There's kayaks up there and gear up there. Fun. And that's, where we hang out. that's so creative. And I just, just kind of do all this stuff. And it was tricky building this part. This is exactly to my height, and this is the bottom of their bed. Yep, so I'm I, sure. I had height restrictions. And then this is my wife and I's bedroom. Awesome. Nothing fancy, just a king size bed and a. There you go. And a smart TV that stands up in the parking lot. That's amazing. And how long have you been rent free? Uh, we've been on the road for, uh, I guess, 18 months now. Yeah. Bar Harbor, Maine to Key West, and now we're going to Olympic Peninsula oh, to yeah. Southern Cali, perhaps Baja, if, if we can pull it off. That's amazing. Yeah, something I talk about a lot is when you get rid of an apartment, you open yourself up to more freedom and adventure because you're not yeah. tied down to a mortgage or rent or anything like that. So I'm a big fan of that kind of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's been yeah. fun. Ah, uh, well, uh, that's one for the bucket list, drinking Moraine Lake coffee at Moraine Lake with a bunch of sweet friends. That was an experience. And it's these random things that happen that are unexpected when you're doing photography, when you're out there hunting for a shot, when you're out there capturing life, making art. It's the, it's the unforeseen things that end up being the most meaningful things.
My friend Gabriel said once to me, it's not the gear, it's not even what I'm shooting, it's where photography takes me. I've been able to travel to uh, countries all around the world. I've been able to meet the most amazing people that I've ever met. I get experiences that other people don't get. It's not even about the pictures that I get, it's the journey that I get to take to get to those pictures. And that's the thing that I always loved about photography. And that realization is exactly, it's everything. It means so much more than the actual shot I set out to get. There's a fun network of people out in Alberta, call themselves van lifers, or they live in a trailer, or a bus, yeah. or a van. Yeah. Hi. Hi. This is me. This is yeah, going. Nice. nice to meet you, Peter. Yeah, this is like, there's like a playroom. Yeah, yeah, so this is Lear's space. Can you give me a five? big high five? Oh. <laughs> this pump. Oh, I, I love this. I love the variety. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm kitchenette bigger than some of my friends who have apartments. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's awesome. This looks great, guys. What made you just decide, like, I'm going to live in there with my whole family and that's that? You're like, hey, let's go on a two-year working visa, sell a house, give up all our stuff, and just travel. So. so you did that? Yeah. Sold your house, got rid of everything, stuck them all in that. And she lives in a bus. Is this a full-on functional home? in Tiffany's Blue. And she she lives in here too, right? Yeah. I did not think we would meet a bunch of cool people that just lived in buses and vans with dogs. And it's just such an amazing community. Like everyone's out there to help each other. You know, it's really yeah. cool. This group of people that I met in Alberta, the people that I was with, that I shared coffee with, the moments we shared at that water's edge making coffee. Each experience of everywhere that you are is completely surrounded by the people that you're with. This place is going to hold a different level of memory for you. You come here, you make coffee with friends, you have a good time and you enjoy it. So how is this powered? Like how's the fridge all oh, powered cool. in? So it's all powered by solar panels which yeah. power uh, the battery right there to the right. What? It's a 255 amp hour battery. I got a 2000 watt inverter and you know, can do whatever you want. You can charge anything. Dude, that you want. I'm, I'm, I'm admiring this. I'm jealous. JR is living in a shuttle bus. Uh, he is a friend of uh, Fun for Louis. And um, we're going to take a little tour. We're going to say hello. And. Uh, we're gonna see if he's in here. Oh, hello. Yo, good morning. Good morning, Jackson. Good morning, JR, man. Oh my goodness, dude, you caught me. Yeah. I, I am a, such a mess. Oh, it's okay, man. We don't we don't have to do a full tour, but uh, I wanna yeah. come outside and yeah, say hello. Come if you. Come on out. Yeah, what happened is I had a very late, late night, and it was like almost 2 a.m. You know, by the time I got to bed here, it was almost 3. We're and I came here and I just stayed all night here. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah. You, you boondocked yeah, in the yeah, parking yeah. lot? Yeah, you know what? Look look in the window what I do. Those are my little tricks what I do. I put my, uh, I put a paper in there saying, a note saying, uh, I, I basically go in a restaurant to get a menu. I put it in a window so it looks like I'm a customer, right? Oh. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my phone number's on there so I probably, probably don't show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so here, here's what we got here. To a main concern, customer, vendor doing business here. Park, by permission, questions. And he puts a menu there. That is so sneaky. <laughs> that way it shows you went into the restaurant. So it's like, oh, he must be a customer. No one bothered me. Right. I do that quite often. Sometimes it works, sometimes it Oh, I thought you just rolled up right now. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I came last night. It was like almost 3 a.m. Oh, that's so funny. If you see here, it says two-hour parking. So <laughs> what a stealth little guy, boondocker this guy is. I'm, 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 you know, I, I, you know I, I had to live on the road and survive for survival, and so I, I was stuck in the city. So I got a Ph.D. in urban survival. <laughs> you know, this isn't, for me, this isn't about living some camping lifestyle. It is fun to go to national parks. It is fun to drop my dirt bike off and or my mountain bike off and do those kind of things. But really the reason I chose this lifestyle was so that I would have the free time to focus on my purpose in life rather than uh, be out camping for camping's sake. So it's home, full-time <laughs> freedom. <laughs> yes, yeah, so he sent me this shirt. I think it's awesome. <laughs> that basically sums it up. And this is what I agree with here as well. I have, I basically drive an apartment around and I'm full-time free. Absolutely, and we can go within our budget. We can go over where we want to go. I've been in Mexico a couple times now. I'm going to be going back down 
at the end of the season this year for a couple of months. It doesn't really cost that much more when you do it the right way, but you still are able to enjoy all of the things that everybody else is able to enjoy that is you know, paying the expensive fees at the resort hotels and things like that. So it's really just a matter of, as Timothy Ferris would say, finding the hacks and all these things, but it's all available to all of us. And so that's one of the extra things I really like about the lifestyle. Do you ever get people looking at you funny, like you're homeless or anything? Like, who's this guy? I had a guy once, uh, I was on my dirt bike, bringing groceries out from a grocery store parking lot. And this guy came up to me, I'm not kidding. And he said, I know you're not asking, but here's a couple of bucks, man. I hope things get better for you. And I was just wondering, my bike looks like a rat bike. It runs, it's a great bike. But I was just wondering, what is it about me that looks like I need a couple of dollars? So, you know, I guess sometimes, but if you keep your hygiene up and you keep your clothes clean, you just blend in with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, you had one incident basically in like five years of somebody confusing you for a homeless person. And he gave me money. <laughs> Without even asking. Without even asking. That's awesome. This lifestyle started uh, back in 2014-ish. Came back from uh, Kuwait, retired from the military, um, and I had originally my Dodge Ram truck, a bumper pull toy hauler, and two motorcycles, which was fine until I decided I wanted to do a lot of traveling, and I could not maintain all of those separate entities and the gas. So sold all that, ended up in this been killer ever since. Cool. And, and the reason why you got rid of your stuff is because spending all the money on all your toys and your house and your everything, it didn't allow you uh, to travel, correct? Exactly. Exactly. I was spending, I had, you know, trying to stay retired. Uh, your income is this and you need to live within that bracket. So uh, this was the most effective way to do that. I, li I like the all-in-one solution here. You, yeah, get, you yeah. get to live in it, you get to go in it and, and basically do everything in it. Exactly. So what are some of the difficulties of being in a vehicle and doing the video game composing? Um, actually, not that much. I, I don't have a lot of drawbacks. Uh, particularly now, I got 640 watts of solar, so I can run all this equipment all day on the solar and still um, charge the batteries and have some capacity for the night. That's amazing. And what's your favorite part about being in an RV? It's just, you can like you can have your view can change every day if you want. You can you can park um, at the Grand Canyon or whatever and have this uh, wonderful view, and that that inspires me also to make music. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be like 70 and uh, not being able to do this, and then regretting that I haven't done it or something. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of the story about the Mexican fisherman? No. Uh, it's, you should, yeah. I should look that up. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's about enjoying the moment versus working your life and then being able to retire later so then you can enjoy the moment. <laughs> That's exactly it, yeah. Yeah, it's about enjoying it now, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And life rapper in real life, living it and rapping about it. And what's funny is that I didn't get into it, like, because van life is so trendy. That's not why. I just couldn't afford rent, you know? And I know that art is what I want to do with my life, you know? And having the ability to create full-time without the pressures of rent is... That's really why I got into this. Yeah, so yeah. you're able to, to pursue your passions more because of Full the time. reduced expenses. I don't have to, like, nowadays I can actually cover what I need with my music, you know? Yeah. Would, so. would you say it's easier to spend less money than it is to make more money? Oh, God, yeah. That's There's like a quote from Bruce Lee where he talks about how it's not even always what you can add, but what you can subtract, you know? Mm -hmm. And so with my music, I was to the point where I was maybe making like 500 plus a month. Right, but rent in Austin and all my bills total, I was spending like thirteen hundred dollars a month. So you could look at that in two ways. You could say, "Oh, I'm not a good enough artist. I need to make more." Or you could be like, "Damn, most artists don't even make five hundred a month. That's a great start." And uh, just go from there. And so I started subtracting bills. Yeah. Instead of feeling like you know I needed to add more, which obviously I'd like to. But one of the main reasons that I bought this particular van or want to go into this lifestyle actually is because I will I have a sticks and bricks house in the Okanagan but it's just getting too expensive my pension checks just aren't covering the bills that keep climbing and so moving into this which I'm planning to do because I'm listing the house in a, a week or two I'm on the verge almost <laughs> um, is that uh, I'm going to be saving a, almost a thousand dollars a month 
to do this um, and I'm just uh, you just can't wait to do it because uh, it's gonna make such a difference in my life <laughs> uh, how long have you been retired for about three years almost yes yeah. and, and what made you decide to just want to start pursuing living in a vehicle versus staying renting like well, I'm just uh, was really concerned with how fast my bank account's being drained, being, you know, not that I'm earning a wage anymore. Um, pensions just don't cut it. And uh, what was I trying to think of? I can't remember. This is just way more fun of an option than paying rent. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, there wasn't, you know, if uh, I was going to have to move into a seniors community or a subsidized seniors community, I just couldn't see, picture myself doing that not yet anyway <laughs> because uh as far as i'm concerned then you're just sort of waiting to die in those places so this way while i'm still able to my health isn't the best and but and you know i'm still able to walk and <laughs> do things i want to do this and then uh, uh we'll just see how it goes and how long i can last for yeah. And uh, if I'm trying to make a, a network connection with people like Chrome and uh, Gus and everybody, I'm just uh, so happy to be able to meet the actual people that are doing this kind of lifestyle yeah. and hear right from their experiences and not just, you know, reading about it in some magazine. Yeah. Or I get asked a lot of the time why the hell I would do something like this and it's really not an easy out of the box answer for that question. Um, I love adventure, I love getting out and living my life and one of the best ways to do that is by living in a van. Um, so that's one of the reasons. The other one is I studied climate change at university and I really just felt like I needed to do something. I jump on planes and I fly around the planet all the time and I felt kind of like a hypocrite when I speak to people about that and the impact that they have on the world and so I just thought, what, what can I do? How can I travel and be more sustainable when I do so? And um, this was the idea that I came up with all of those lonely nights at uh, the airport <laughs> when I was questioning my reality. All right guys, so what we have on the roof here is our flexible solar panels. Um, and in total we have about 6,000 watts, which is six kilowatts, it's a ton of energy. Um, the reason we chose the flexible ones, lighter, flexible, they're more durable. Um, we lose a bit of energy as far as that goes, but we don't really mind. Um, the weight that we save is way better than um, than what we were gonna get with glass panels. So, but yeah, the way that it works is we just slide these out when we roll up for a couple of days. Um, we charge the van up and then we keep driving. It's sort of like a 20 minute process and we think it looks great. <laughs> People always ask me, where do you sleep? Uh, I sleep in very rich neighborhoods. <laughs> Tesla superchargers are what make this practical. For me, uh, I have unlimited free supercharging that's been grandfathered in. I lift drive for money. I don't have to pay for gas. I don't have any overhead when it comes to moving people around. And not working a nine to five allows you to kind of dabble in these interests and really bulk up your character and your being better because the nine to five, it just drains you. What do you do when you get home from a nine to five? You don't want to do anything. You want to sit down, go on the computer, watch TV, do a lot of mindless things, but I knew that if I didn't get out of the nine to five, if I didn't get out of a very comfortable place, then I wouldn't be able to push myself forward. You, you have to go through, is it actually worth it for you? What do you want to be doing in your life? Can you get by doing it? It's gonna reveal itself to you. It may not be a spinner van, it may not be an RV, it may not be an electric vehicle, but it could be something. Be open to what could come your way and what opportunities. This seriously fell in my lap and I couldn't pass it up and it was everything that I tried to live by. Well, we graduated from UCCS, University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, uh, about a year ago. And we decided that we wanted to see America. So for the last eight months and 10 days, we've driven 35,400 and some miles. Wow. And we've seen everything. We, we don't just go to every state, we go to every sand dunes, every city, every national park, every, everything that there is to do that people tell us to do. Fun. We do. Fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, let's see your uh, adventure rig if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so, so first of all, we got the CB radio, so we're always in communication with uh, A, our other guy who's in another vehicle. Okay. 
and B truckers and then I've got a police scanner so we can listen to forest rangers if they see like animals in a park we'll hear about it before everybody else does they'll be like oh we got whatever like a grizzly bear you know try to keep people away from here we'll yeah go right there you're a there. genius I love that idea that's so awesome I've never heard of that before and then my shift knob obviously is awesome <laughs> my hula girl's custom I dremeled her nice top off yeah that's what she said other than that <laughs> I mean it's just loaded down yep one funny thing is my car is weighted down so heavy uh -huh. that I have this block of wood, and every time we stop for longer than two hours, we just lift <laughs> oh, it up. Oh there my! Go. Oh and my God! My shocks. Wow! <laughs> sit down. That is so funny. So, how many days? You told me before, but for the camera, how many days have you guys camped versus stayed in places? So we've been on the trip for. Like, 200, 250 days, yeah. and we've camped about 200 of those days. And, and where did you sleep on the non-camping days? Uh, there's an app called Couchsurfing, and friends, family, random people we meet at a yeah. bar, like anybody who's like, oh, you want to stay at my place? Yeah. Probably. I love this. So even if you don't have a big vehicle and something you can sleep in, you can totally do this. Yeah, I actually, you can't really tell. But I unbolted and took out the back seat and replaced it with this wood. And that's actually a box and there's hatches under there with uh, just full of, we have rock climbing gear, snorkeling gear, rappelling, like anything and everything, winter, summer, you know, whatever. That's so cool. It all packed into this little you guys are ready for any adventure that comes your way. Each one of us, there's three guys total on this trip. One of our guys just crashed his car, isn't here. Uh, he spent a little bit more. He doesn't get as good a mileage, but Tweedy and I have spent both spent about three thousand dollars total. That's gas, breakdowns, food, everything. Unbelievable! That is so cool. We eat a can of beans, a can of mixed vegetables, a can of like random corn, tomatoes, and a can of meat. Season it, and we eat that pretty much every night for dinner. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all day, and then oatmeal for breakfast. And we just kind of oats water yeah whatever else you feel like putting in there that might be good yeah that is so cool yeah but i mean <laughs> the key is just never eat out and always camp or like never pay for a place to sleep and you'll save like and have a reliable car and have a reliable car this is old trusty i bought this car with 186,000 miles on it and on this trip i started with 280 I think I started with 285,000 miles on it, and we just hit 300 and 321,503 miles on this car. And I've done all the work on it and fixed it all up. And every time it breaks, you know, just yeah, fix it. But yep. So far, so good. Man, I can't believe we made it this far. You guys are rad. I love it. <laughs> all right, so here we have Eleanor's We're in the Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have a name for your bicycle? I do not, but this bike. Um, I got it, I think it was like two years ago in New York. I was on a bike ride with my parents in Queens on the way to Jackson High to get Indian food and my old bike broke and they were like, and I was kind of sad, they were like, uh, 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 we're not going to stop here, we're going to get you another bike. There was kind of like their present. Um, and, and so, so it's my New York commuter bike. It's not <laughs> a bike touring bike, it's not a road bike, it's like nothing. That's amazing. And it's. It's it's you know it's a super affordable bike, um, very well designed. You know you have a space for your water bottle and this. And then I got some for this trip. I got this like two panniers, and then I see extra t uh, tire I got, here. Huh? So I yeah I broke already. I broke a wheel and then I broke a tire. So I was like, and then I got this new tires. But I got this. I I kept my old one because it was not gonna be worn out. Mm. Um, and then I, I have this tent that I got because I catered an event of State New York <laughs> in the summer. Um, and then here's my sleeping bag that I also got at that event I catered. Oh, that's right. The sleeping bag is inside it's in, some it's a, it's a, uh, it's inside rain pants. A, a pair of rain pants, the extra, extra, extra large that someone gave me because it was super too rainy. So it was a little bit too big for me, but I figured I could always fit my sleeping bag in it. Wow, that's insane. I gotta say, <laughs> this is inspirational right here. I mean. I thought I was living a minimalist lifestyle, but she beats me in the minimalist department for sure. Honestly, it's the best <laughs> trip ever. <laughs> What do you 
do 100 miles from nowhere, car breaks down? You're in your home. <laughs> you pull over and you make dinner. <laughs> Literally. Now, to be clear, Bob Wells knows what you're thinking when you see the van and the beard. For most people, I think, the archetypal failed character in American life is the guy in the van down by the river. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you want to say you're a loser, that's how you would describe it. And the first night Wells slept in his van, he felt like a loser. I had uh, just gotten a divorce, something I swore I would never do. We were fighting over the kids. I faced losing them. And now I'm living in a van. But as the months rolled by... Every step of the way, you just answer every problem as it comes up. Bob Wells started to feel less lost and more like a man who had found a roadmap to happiness. 20 years later, he's sure of it. Bob Wells says today's van dwellers are a little different from the retirees that have long spent their golden years in RVs. There are a lot of RVers who live a normal, happy life. Well, they transferred their average same life that they've always had and put it in an RV and lived exactly the same way. I see van dwellers as rejecting to some degree something about society. It could be the nine to five grind, uh, whatever it is, it's not just the transfer of the same life they've always lived for the last 50 years into a different home shape on wheels. It's a rejection of some element of it. Wells says he's committed to helping everyone find their own answers out here on the not so lonesome road. It is a story of desperation and of ecstatic victory. Wow. Do you feel like your message is chipping away at the model of America that exists today? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I Not do. to put too fine a point on it. No, yeah, I hope so. That's my goal. I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to cook. I didn't know how to go to the bathroom. I didn't know how to... The basics of life, which we all take for granted, you flip on the switch at night, you turn on the heat, you turn on the air conditioning, you go to the bathroom, you lift the lid, and you go to the toilet. Those are all... I just all take those for granted. Well, those were all gone. There was no lid, there was no light switch, there was no heat, uh, there was no bed, there was no nothing. I love living in a van or the camper or a vehicle. I love it. Uh, I don't want to ever live any other way. Living on the National Forest in the summer and BLM Desert Land, BLM stands for Bureau of Land Management, out west, there's a huge amount of land that's worthless. You drive by and there's nothing there. And you think, who owns this? Well, probably the federal government owns it. Uh, the ranchers and the state turns it over to them. Then they don't have to pay taxes. But the ranchers can get a permit and run their cattle on it. So they got free range and there are no taxes. So it works good for everybody. And the government owns the land. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that it is, it's a cultural pit that we're falling into. The advertisers make us feel incomplete without a, a new car, and that's a lot of money. Or, or, but the most, the, the biggest killer is housing. The average American spends 47% of his take-home pay for a roof over his head. Whoa, that's a crime almost. Uh, people grossly overestimate what they need. This trailer is 22 feet long, and uh, and it has everything that a person would need. It's satellite TV here, and this is a internet access, and, and that's satellite radio, and I have solar panels on the roof, which deliver me all the power I could possibly use, and, uh, and it costs uh, about nothing. It seems to me so wrong that the Industrial Revolution can, can punch out gadgets, a million Twinkies in a day if it needed. There's enough Twinkies for everybody, and it's all done by machinery. The fruits of the Industrial Revolution ought to be liberty. And in that liberty, people people have a chance to discover who they really are. I mean, I see people's personality bloom and blossom. I see creativity pouring out of people like this. Not everybody who does this is creative, but many are. And the heroes are. They're out there writing. And, and it's just it's one of those amazing coincidences that the thing that is the most fun in the world to do happens to be incredibly cheap and incredibly <laughs> beneficent. You know, it, it, good news for people. We consume less. I personally think that there's at least a million people in the United States today that ought to be free, and they're not. 
if they think they need a million dollars in the banks before before they can before they can win their liberty. But the truth is, uh, if you got an income stream of five hundred dollars a month uh, after you get your rig, uh, you can you can live this life and be free and do the world a favor while you're at it because you, you your consumption will go way down. And uh, furthermore, small town America is now opening itself us to uh, they want us to come in and camp free. The tiny little town of Quartzsite decided to open itself up some years back, and lo and behold, it is now rich. They don't know what to do with all the money uh, that they get because 100,000 people converges on that town for two months out of the year. And uh, and other towns uh, have welcomed us in. I've taken caravans and and uh, gone to the mayor of the town and little small, especially ghost towns, towns that are dying. You know, they'd welcome us in. The long and the short of it is there's plenty of room and plenty of places. And demand will keep up with supply, in my humble opinion. Call me an optimist. You know, pe people do worry about me. You're a woman traveling alone, you know. I've never had a problem. <laughs> Seven years. I haven't had a problem. I sleep with my, <laughs> with here, right here with this beautiful site and those cool nights. I sleep with my door open. Can you believe that? Would I do that at home? You know, I got a neighbor there, a nice neighbor there. It's a beautiful, cool evening, you know. Screen door, that's it. Uh, every place I park, I wouldn't, of course. But a lot of places I can feel that comfortable and that safe. And I'm not afraid out here. There's no fear in my life. And I think, why am I so open and welcoming? Because I'm not ruled by fear. Uh, fear isn't dominant part of my life. And I hear something I'm afraid. I hear voices. I hear shots. Am I going to get shot at? Is there a bullet going to, bullet going to whiz by? I have normal fear. If you don't have fear, you're not. Something's really seriously wrong. My life isn't dominated by fear. And uh, you're welcome into my camp because I'm not afraid of you. Fear is something you just have to look past, and, and really just going out and doing it is uh, the easiest way to get past the fear. Uh, if it's something you're thinking about doing, just definitely chase your dreams. Um, there's, there shouldn't be anything that holds you back from your dream. Right now, there are nine people in tents and vans around me where I'm camped. They're just people I love, and we've connected. And I don't see a lot of them, but when we see each other, it's like we've never been apart. And so, oddly enough, I believe the hermits live in houses today. Uh, I won't put you on the spot and ask you how many of your neighbors do you know, really know, but I bet it's not many. And if you, if you do, you're the exception and not the rule. And yet if you ask me how many deeply connected friends do I have who live in vans, I would tell you dozens. Uh, so I believe we're the mentally healthy ones. I have a, a generator and a microwave and a toaster and a sun oven. And here I'm living in the middle of nowhere. I mean, this is not a bad place to live. Right over there, and I mean right over there, probably not even a mile away, are million dollar homes. And I get everything they get, and I don't have a million dollar home payment. So you gotta follow the rules, and we have rejected the rules. We're not living in a house, we're not looking for a better house. Uh, we're not even, some of us aren't even looking for jobs. I really don't think more than half the people have to work. I believe the unemployment rate should be somewhere around 50 percent because you know, the Industrial Revolution has freed us. We can, we can do it. I live off so little and, and I'm happy. Just enjoying life. That's, you know, it's going to take some time, but it happens. It happens. I'm home, safe, I'm, you know, I'm happy. This is something that's definitely a viable way of life, and even if even if it's not right for them to, you know, sell all their stuff and go travel or live in a van, uh, the idea here is definitely that if you have a dream, chase it. And uh, you know, we try to share that message with as many people as possible. That um, just because something sounds out outlandish doesn't mean that you should just write it off. That uh, there's a lot of crazy things we can do that make us happy. The time is that's what you have. You know, spend it, spend it wisely. Uh, choose your, choose your life. Don't let life choose its a path. Somebody else, or somebody else, choose your path. Or choose how you spend your time. It's been about 35 years uh, since I've done a day's work. Uh, I hope that inspires some people. It's possible to actually be free.
Oh, you got your laundry done on those belts. Oh, look at that. That looks good. Look. Professional. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Look at that, guys. She made. She put into a wrap for us. Right now, we're going to uh, this mall because we're gonna go get some food. And then I don't know what we're doing. The whole day's free, and I'm chilling. But yeah, we're attempting to cross the street. <laughs> it's deadly. You gotta go at your own risk. You gotta risk it. We did it. So yeah, here's the mall. We're gonna try to get up to the top, see if it works. Hopefully no, no one uh, gets mad at us. See, here's the warning signs. Construction going on. I don't know, there are villages and people live here, so we'll see what happens. So far, I don't feel um, unwelcomed yet. Guys, look at it, we found our own viewpoint. We made it up ourselves. Under construction, no one has been here, except the locals. Damn! See, my crazy ideas are great. Exploring with Josh, you know? Dude, this is perfect. Oh! Okay. I like this view. This is a good view. So yeah guys, um, this is just like a lesson, typical of how I do it. Um, you see a spot, it looks cool, hey, that looks cool, I should go. Just go. Trust me, because then this is what you get for rewards. No tourists are around you, no people to bother you. You just see stuff that people will never usually see. It's like your spot, your secret spot. Just a risk, you get out of your comfort zone. You know, that's what it's all about. It's cool how you get to just meet people and then, you know, you build up a friendship and then you just go travel and they go their separate ways and you just, it's like, almost like, it don't matter about your friendship, but in a way it's kind of cool. It's like you meet people as you go, and then you just you just like leave. It's weird. It's hard to it's it's just hard to explain, guys. Imagine being away for unlimited time, not knowing when you're gonna return, and you're on a vacation for like 50 or 60 days. That's pretty crazy. Objective sort of complete. This is completely stuffed. Every day we have to take it out just to go to bed, take this, take our stuff out, and put it back in again. It's gonna be a hassle. It's gonna be annoying. Two of our drones are going to be sat right in the middle right here. Some food's on the floor. I mean, it's going to be squishy, but it's going to be fun in the end. You can't complain right now. You know, sometimes I wish there was like a purpose to life. You know, we're born and we grow old and we die, right? So I'm like, okay, well, is there a purpose? Like, what's the meaning? Like, I want a meaning. I want a goal that I can achieve. I just don't know what it is. You know, like every goal I've done, I achieve. So now it's like, okay, what's next? My goal right now was to um, travel and hit a million subscribers. And I did. And I'm still traveling. The, the, the traveling goal is never going to end. I'm going to travel till I die, pretty much. But I'm just like, damn, is there more? Like, I, like, I just want I want a purpose, you know? I just want to be born with a purpose of something. I just don't know what it is yet. I'm thinking, like, what else can I achieve? Because right now, I'm not satisfied at all. Like, if I were to die right now, I'd not be satisfied. Even if I see the world, if I see the whole world, I would not be satisfied right now. There's more, and I'm, and I'm missing it right now. I just don't know where it is. Maybe I'll find it. I'm lost. I'm lost in life. I don't really know what I'm doing. But I'm just living and I'm traveling. You know, I'll see the whole world, but then what? You know, then what? I'm gonna die anyway, right? I th maybe I think too much. We gotta go. My view on life is, as long as I'm happy and comfortable with living, I don't care. I'm doing everything while I'm young. I'm gonna ex keep exploring as I'm young. Keep experiencing new things. I love, I need to progress in something. I don't care if it's progressing and exploring. I gotta keep moving. I can't be at a standstill point. I gotta keep getting the motivation and inspiration I need to get to where I wanna be. I'm just gonna keep traveling. I got a lot of things to do. And here I am now. I can say I made my dreams come true, and it's just getting started. It's crazy how places like this exist. It doesn't even seem real, man. Especially if you're all clumped up in a city or in the middle of nowhere. You don't never be able to see this. I get some sort of weird relaxation when I'm completely away from everyone in the middle of nowhere, looking at absolutely nothing. I love it. Like, seriously, everyone, I'm like such a big nature fan. Like, I love seeing uh, natural landscapes. Um, I'm all about protecting uh, nature. I'm all about protecting the lands. I'm all about, um, not, I don't, I, I hate when people build and knock down trees and stuff like that, you know? So, it sucks when they destroy the earth because we live on the earth. And it's good, you know, we have uh, national parks that can keep and maintain stuff like this nice. You know, it's actually just interesting, you know? Because it's not like, it's both ways though. It's both ways. The U.S. is full of all bunch of bullshit too. So, it's not like they're bad because they're not. We're all the same in some way, you know? We're all human. So, it's not like I'm, I'm racist anymore. Anyway, I'm just telling him what they said, you know, because I mean we, even we even Americans There's a whole bunch of stuff going on both sides. You know, we do stuff all the time That's horrible and you know, it's equal so they don't recommend us walking here They said they can't tell us not to so I said screw it You know, I want to see if I can talk to someone He also said the reason why the walls are like this and they're not fully solid is because uh, they really wanted something that 
is cheap, but you know, does the job. And that's where they came across with this. Trust me guys, I'm all about world peace. If there was a way to get these walls knocked down and, and come together as one, I'm totally down for that. Honestly. Hey, I just realized I haven't stopped smiling for like an hour. It's just constant like bliss. It's amazing, it's, isn't it? I feel kind of bad because we don't live in this environment. So we're just coming in and like, I feel like we're objectifying them a little bit, but we're also really connecting with them and like having some real true moments. With and there's like no hostility at all. Nothing. Like I haven't felt unsafe once. I'm walking around with a really expensive camera. <laughs> no, like no hostility whatsoever. I think that's because you have and yeah. and even when um, even when the guys have declined us taking photos, it's like really polite. It's not like they're getting angry. Dude. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, my pleasure. What's your name, man? My name is Kishan. Damon. All right, I'm hey. from Chicago. Dave. No way. Yeah. I'm from Canada. Uh, yeah, West Coast. Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out here hustling, right? Yeah. Dude. Hey, that help out your day a little? Oh yeah. Oh, thank you very much. You want some more water? We got lots. Oh, man. That's a nice sandwich. It is, Sam. We just went and picked them up. We got a couple apples in there. Keep oh, you healthy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. God bless you. I appreciate that so much. My pleasure. How long have you been out here? Oh, man, for a while. I got my family in Chicago, you know. Yeah? Violent in Chicago. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Man, thank you very much. Hey, man, it's our pleasure. Oh, man. We just want you to have a better day. Yeah, thank you. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. All right, thank you. A huge increase of homeless people, especially unsheltered here in Los Angeles. It's a real problem. And some of those people are, are families. And on top of all that, you know, you think, oh, it's a mental illness or drug addiction. It's not. There's a lot of people who just can't afford the rental situation here. There's a lot of people living out of their car because they can't afford a house. Yeah, I just, my heart goes out to these people. This isn't real. Yours, We're renting them or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody owns these, man. This is yours. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> we filled it up and everything. You want to go ride? Yeah. You got a full tank, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I'm so grateful for not like le obviously the jet ski, but like just like this group, like everything that y'all have helped me with, everything that we've done, everything that we're gonna do. Like, it's, it's more than just the jet ski. So, like, I know the cameras are out, but like, this is real, so. This is real, brother. This is real, this is real. Reading about a concept called the overview effect. The basic idea is that it's a cognitive shift in awareness of how minuscule humanity really is. Astronauts get this feeling when they're in space, when they're looking down on the earth. And like when I first got to Hanoi, this city was so big, it was so confusing. But now that I've seen it from so many different perspectives, from so many different heights, it just seems smaller. I don't know how to explain it. Like when you're looking down on all the thousands of cars and all the people, everything is just so minuscule and so small and you're in the the, the grand scheme of things, a lot of people would see that and think, oh, that must mean we're meaningless. So what is the point of life? Reality is I get so much comfort out of accepting how minuscule we really are because it just puts into perspective how small your problems are. All these massive problems that you have that you think are so important and so, it just really puts things into perspective. Never take life too seriously. Take your risks, man. Do what you have to do whilst you're here. Just hanging out with people and just having conversation is way enough fun for me to want to go do anything. I don't have, you don't have to get high to have fun. Like all of the funnest times of my life had nothing to do with being high or drunk. I used to go to parties with everybody while everybody's doing drugs or smoking or drinking. And I love going to parties still because all I'm doing is having fun and talking with people. And if anything, you're just as high as they are, dude. You're I know, like, right? You're more f***ed up than everybody else. <laughs> Everybody'd be like, dude, who, all the drunk people <laughs> be saying like, dude, what is he on, dude? <laughs> and I'm literally the only sober one there. Yeah. Yeah, because they're, I mean, that you could be a lamo and be totally like drunk or high and, t and not even be any fun. Yeah, exactly. So it's a matter of your mind. How, if you want to have fun, you'll have fun. Yeah. But you don't need to do drugs or, get, or drink to do it to yeah. have fun. As we thought we were finally going through the full Wim Hof method, he decided to fully flip the script. 
again and skip the rest of the training and go straight to the mountain. Today, shut the fuck up and let's climb this mountain. It's about do it. Leave the mountain alone with your pathetic thoughts. Over. Done. And now we go up the mountain and do it. Buddy already knows what it is going up again. <laughs> Dude is 71 years old. That's how I want to be when I'm 71. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. Yeah, that was, yeah, you you got that whole thing. You. You're amazing. Uh, no, I'm mind. just an old guy that's got a little experience. No, it's just unbelievable. How young are you? I'll be 72 in February. Yeah. You think you got that? That adrenaline addiction? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm on there all the time watching you. You need to throw that hat off. You need to throw that hat off. All the time, yes. man. You, know, you, you watch the Yes, movies? I saw oh, you. that's cool. Yeah. Well, I'm impressed. You can, you can officially join the crew. Thank you. I hope so. Anytime you want. <laughs> all right, so I just got done talking to Hassan. He's that 71-year-old that just showed us all up, which is insane. But uh, he said he watches my videos and it actually inspired him, influenced him to stop drinking, get in better shape, and start cliff jumping at a better, higher level. There's just nobody 90 years old that's doing what I am doing. Because of my feeling and the unusual health that I enjoy, I don't have any joint problems, my knees are good, and I like riding my bike. I can actually, at my age, I kick my shoes off and I can sprint. I can sprint 50 yards like nothing. And then when I want to show off, <laughs> I do a back flop. <laughs> and I'll light at the water 10 feet below, flat on my back, and it just echoes flat. And honestly, gosh, and I did it recently. My back was red for about three hours. <laughs> and sure, it stung, but everybody enjoyed it. This, especially me, I like their attention. Oh! 100,000! <laughs> One million members in Yee Yee Nation! Thank you guys! And that's all we can truly say is thank you guys! Each and every single one of you. This is just the start. So many more bangers on the way. We want to continue to use these videos to inspire, motivate, and just make you guys laugh. Because without you guys, we would not be where we are. And all I have to say is, if you really want something in life, dedicate your time, work hard, and just decide that you are going to work at it. Every single day, you're going to get better. You're going to do it because that's what you love to do. Every kid out there, every person out there, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you can truly accomplish anything that you set your mind to there are no limits my friends two years ago Nick and I were filming and editing on our phones the whole thing doing it on our phones no subscribers no one was watching but we kept on grinding we kept on trying and we learned along the way we failed but we got back up and we kept on going and that's what you have to do if you want something you got to keep working hard you got to keep on going towards it and you can accomplish anything you set your mind to my friends what's up weirdos Tell the city what's up. That's what's up, right? Not only do we come here and I feel like we're making a huge difference and we work and I feel that this is something I truly want to do a lot more of, but it's also been a good lesson to uh, understand how much better my brain or I think generally how we feel when we're working with our hands, where we're working hard and doing good stuff rather than being scrolling through Instagram for six hours a day or doing emails and I constantly feel stressed but this week I have felt better than I ever have and I think it's a combination of being here doing good things but also to get away and just sort of live life like right here right now no no distractions no nothing so it, it's been nothing short of incredible and I promise that we are gonna do more stuff like this that hopefully we can involve uh, a lot more people in so that we can maybe some of you can join us on future trips because I hope that it's gone through how amazing this all has been <laughs> ah. <sighs> We're not even in Tofino yet. <laughs> Just so much beauty over here and I seriously don't want to leave. I could get used to this every single day. I 
I've told you once, I've told you twice, three times, I've told you 500 times. That is the best decision of my life. All my weirdos! Go, go! Friends will come and friends will go. Leaving the footprints to melt in the snow. And all to the joy and let go of the pain. All with a promise of shame. That's pretty much it for my van life movie. Hope you got something out of it. I know it was pretty long, but it was pretty awesome. And I guess that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my van life adventure. Peace!